Hi y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, good morning from cloudy but beautiful South Florida. I'm down here on Lake Ida today. I'm on a South Florida road trip adventure this week, and boy, we're gonna have some fun today. I have got a bucket full of live shiners. We're gonna be doing some live bait fishing for literally everything. Peacock bass, huge bluegill, clownfish, other exotic fish. We're gonna troll with those live shiners, work these dock shorelines all the way around through here on Lake Ida. But first though, I'm gonna throw an artificial this morning and pick off some areas that I got some fish yesterday. I rolled into town late yesterday afternoon, had a couple hours of daylight when I got here. I said, I'm gonna get on the water, see what I can figure out. So I was able to catch some fish in these areas. So I'm gonna throw an artificial first thing this morning. I'm gonna put the camera in the chest. Y'all, we're going raw and uncut again today. Unedited, completely unfiltered. You're gonna be like, it's like you're out here with me. Real fishing trip, no highlight crap. You're seeing it all. Every cast, every fish caught, every crazy thing that happens, you're seeing it. We're gonna see some fishing guides out here today too. At the boat launch, there was a ton of them getting ready to take clients out. Right here's what I'm gonna start with this morning. This is a one inch gulp minnow. I've got it on a slightly bigger jig head than I normally use. That's a 132nd ounce head with a number six size hook, two pound test line, ultralight rod, St. Croix panfish series on a 1000 size Daiwa reel. And we're gonna throw around this dock here first thing. Here's the situation y'all. Well, first off it's starting to rain too. I hope it don't rain hard because the rain suit is in the car. I didn't think it was going to rain. Cloudy. I didn't see rain in the forecast today. <laughs> you and me, we may get drenched. Y'all are probably smart enough to pack you, your rain suit. I ain't going back to the car. We'll just get wet. It's hotter than damn it out here anyway. It's the dang humid down here. You, you feel like you're wet when you step out the car. But anyway, we're going to throw this gulp here first thing. I... What I wanted to do, I, I got out here yesterday and we got close to sunset and started seeing fish busting the surface. And I said, you know what? I'd like to have me a whopper plopper on. Well, here's the thing. My silly self forgot to pack any. The whopper ploppers, top water plug, they at the house. And I thought, well, no problem. I was gonna go get some live bait for this morning anyway. I'll just pick one up. So anyway, I went to Walmart last night in Boynton Beach. And I thought, I can get me a Whopper Plopper. They'll have something there, whether it's a Whopper Plopper, a Chopo, or Ozark Trail, whatever Walmart has, you know. I go in there, and they don't have hardly anything. Not a single topwater plug to be had. No Whopper Ploppers, not a buzz bait, nothing. And I thought, well... I'm out of luck here, but again, I was going to go to a tackle shop and get us some shiners this morning anyway, so whatever. I'll just pay a, a premium price at the, at the bait shop. Well, I go in this little rinky-dink bait shop, and first off, I'm late getting out here too because I had to wait on them to open. They didn't open at 6.30. But I go in there, they don't have a single plug in the store. They're not even selling artificials. They've got live baits of various kinds, They've got hooks and sinkers, terminal tackle type stuff. No artificials in that store. So we are completely out of luck on a dang top water. I, I'm just, I'm at a loss with it, man. I'm like, how the hell do you not have a top water plug in a, in a Walmart? How do you not have it in a tackle shop? So undoubtedly, there's probably a Bass Pro down here. But, like I said, I was already a little late getting out here because I had to wait on the tackle shop opening. I didn't want to try to find a Bass Pro and make a run there and then have to come back. So we're going to go gulp here for a little while, see if I can get some big copper nose bluegill or bass or something else here in these places that, especially this dock here where I got a few yesterday evening. And then after that, we're going to put on some shiners and we're just going to troll around. And speaking, and speaking, like I said, I thought if the bait shop, if they had any topwater plugs or anything like that, 
you know, you go to you go to a mom and pop store. It's just you expect to pay a premium, right? That's just how it is. Well, I knew I'd be paying more for them shiners than what I'd pay for them back home. At home, they're like six dollars a dozen, seven dollars someplace. You know how much them things are down here? Fifteen ninety nine a dozen. I, I about wee weed my pants right there at the cash register. They're big. I mean, them dang things are. They're they're a big shiner, but they uh, they're proud of them down here. <laughs> so them things better catch us some peacocks, man. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be very upset if we don't get a bunch of peacocks on them shiners. So far, the gulp ain't doing much for us here. I thought here at first light we'd see some activity like there yesterday evening, but that's not the case so far. I'm not really seeing anything busting the surface. I Even on the way up through here, I'm in the, this Lake Ida, is, oh, there was something right there that hit the surface. Lake Ida is kind of a two-part lake. It's a canal-fed lake. There's all these little canals everywhere in South Florida. And periodically, these canals will open up to deeper lake-like areas. And Lake Ida is one of those canal lakes. This is in the West Palm Delray Beach area down here. And so this, this lake is basically a two-part lake. You've got the bigger, wider section on basically this side of the house. There's a little canal that cuts through and then opens up over here to a smaller section of the lake. And yesterday I started fishing the other side by the by the boat launch and worked my way up and I, and I didn't really do any good over there it was really it was really choked out with weeds on that part that i was fishing it was hard to it was hard to cast you was getting i was getting salad salad mix on every dang cast but once i got up over here could actually cast around these docks that wasn't just choked out with weeds i started catching fish I just thought for sure we'd come back this morning and just tear them up. And we probably will on that live bait. But I just want to throw this gulp here a minute. Y'all know I like throwing the gulp, so you just going to have to bear with me. If you just tuned in, if you clicked on this video because of the live bait deal, fast forward a little while. Give me like another five to ten minutes with this and we're going <laughs> we to get after it with the live bait. I got to... You gotta appease me here, people. We're gonna have some fun today, regardless. I've looked forward to this trip all year. It's finally here. Now my regular viewers, you may be seeing this trip out of order. Since I filmed that raw and uncut video yesterday for my, when I rolled into town, I, I think it was about Two and a half hours I was able to fish before sunset. I probably won't post two long videos back to back. That's probably not good for business. So you may be seeing this after my after my shark fishing videos probably. So I'm heading down to the Keys this afternoon. When I leave here, I'm gonna head to the airport pick up the partner in crime, head down south, down to the Keys, and then tomorrow, I'm gonna get after the sharks. So you'll probably be seeing the shark fishing trips, and then this after that, assuming I got on some sharks. I don't wanna jinx it, but I'm, I'm hoping I do. So, Anyway, there's your little update for those of you that give a crap. And some of you out there in the internet land are at least nice enough to pretend to care even if you don't. And I appreciate that. <laughs> These fish on this dock apparently don't give a crap today. I, I was catching a few of them big copper nose bluegill, them big hand sized ones last night. Nothing to be had here this morning. 
tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna fish over here to this other dock. Cause I caught some over here too. And then after that, we're gonna throw on the, the live baits. If we're not just getting them here with the gulp. The gulp is gonna be pretty much impossible to fish here in a little while, I think. They're calling for high winds later this morning. Now the high winds, because out here in these, you know, this canal lake here, Lake Ida, it's not very wide. It's not going to impose any kind of, the wind will be a nuisance, but it won't be any kind of threat or danger or anything like that. We, we'll be able to function. Just probably not with the gulp. This finesse tactic here, ultralight, when you got high winds, it's hard to fish it because it'll blow a bow in your line and just, it'll make it, make it hard to feel the lighter bites. So we'll probably just focus on the live baits the rest of the morning. That bird up there is focusing on him, a live bait too, watch him. He's gonna try to catch something before we do. You think he will? Call your bookie in Vegas right now. It's me versus that bird up there. Who's gonna catch a fish first? He is smart enough, he's got his rain suit on. He's always wearing his rain suit. Them feathers, I think, are just naturally water repellent. Mine, back at the car. Thankfully, it's just like a little fine mist right now. Oh, oh, you bird, I had me a bite right then. I may be the underdog in Las Vegas, but by gosh, I just had a, I had a little nip. You better get after it, bird. <laughs> he cocked his head, he knows I'm talking to him. He knows I'm over here talking trash to a bird. Some of you are like, well, Justin's talking trash to the bird, but that's a professional fisherman right there. He fishes for a living, literally. If he don't catch fish, he don't live. Look at him, look at him. He couldn't handle the pressure. He couldn't handle it, folks. He's flying off. Some people ain't cut out for big time competitions. They just, they, the stress, the pressure it gets to them. On that bird, he just, he buckled. I guess I kind of win by default. Cause I'm gonna catch a fish somewhere down through here. It ain't happened as quickly as what I would have hoped to. But by gosh, it's gonna happen. These birds all over this yard, but last night I saw them people. They was throwing feed out to them. They got these birds trained to get over here and annoy people filming a video. I know there's like a baney rooster. He's got his, he's got his dang, he had his wings flapped out like he's big time. They probably laughing at that old heron I ran off. Got me a weed. Good, it come off. That piece of grass just spit the hook. Yeah, y'all, I'm hoping to ultimately get a, a variety of species out here today. It doesn't matter to me what we get. I got the copper nose bluegill I was wanting to catch yesterday, so I'd really like to, ideally in a perfect world, I'd like to get some peacock bass today. Some bigger ones. I got some baby ones yesterday. Need some bigger ones today. Well, them birds up there, they, they're into it. One of them's got a problem with the other. Mm. All right, let's make us one more cast with the gulp here and we're gonna, we're gonna get after the live bait. 
I just wanted to I just wanted to see if I could repeat some magic from last night on this little area right here. And it don't look like it's happening tonight. Or today. Today, tonight, it's it's today and tonight somewhere. Depending on what time zone you're in. Okay. Well, I'm going to take this gulp off because if not, these things will dry out on the hook and you've pretty much ruined a jig head at that point. All right, here's what I think I'm going to do. I've got two basically just plain hooks tied on my other rods for the shiners. I may put one of these shiners on a jig head here to start and then another one. We're going to troll them. I'll put one on the ultralight. If we hook a big peacock on this ultralight, that'd be a good time. We may end up switching over to the to the bigger rods on both both rods, but we'll start with this. All right. Look at these shiners right here. These dang things are huge. Fifteen ninety nine a dozen, though. You better. They better come with a fish attached to them. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna take that jig head hook. We're going right out through a nostril there. I'm gonna throw him. We're gonna throw him off the right side of the kayak. Give him a little toss back there. Don't let me forget to turn that bell over in a second. Now this here, this is a little bit stouter rod. That's a medium heavy rod. I got 30 pound braid to 15 pound fluorocarbon to, uh, I think this is a number, number two size hook. Let's get this in. We're gonna do the same thing though. We're gonna go right out through the nostril there throw him off the other side of the kayak and we just gonna slow troll just very 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 slow half a mile an hour probably ish we're gonna work over here along the shoreline we're gonna take a look at all the sites out here as we move along Set that one, that rod on. We got this one in there. We ready to roll, y'all. So, yeah, y'all. South Florida road trip. Started out great yesterday evening. Off to a little bit of a rough start this morning. Just for the simple fact you can't find a whopper plopper anywhere around here. Or buzz bait, anything. I, it blows my mind, but... Uh, we do have our live bait at least, so we're gonna make it count out here today, but I'm just gonna work the shoreline here, just trolling around. So I'm gonna put y'all camera in the chest. I hate that we're this far into video and ain't got a fish yet, but that's fishing folks. Like I said, y'all out here, let me get this camera adjusted. Uh, y'all out here on a real fishing trip today. Unedited. Raw and uncut. If we were out here in a boat fishing together, well, y'all would have probably done caught five fish by now. Me, I'm piddling around. I've been piddling around with that gulp instead of just throwing these shiners in and letting them work for me. That's a nice thing about live bait is they will do the work for you. We may have to end up, we may have to end up trolling the other way. The wind's kind of blowing this direction. Right now it's okay, but if it, as it picks up, we may have to end up trolling into it. Look at old Toucan Sam over here. He's sitting over there, he's just hanging out waiting on you. That, that bird right there has been waiting on me to come back to Florida for a year.
He's climbing up on that dock over there to get a better look at you. That in there too. Look at the roof on that house up there. It's curved like one of them. Uh, it reminds me of like Mr. Miyagi Karate Kid type house. Yeah, right now we got that one shiner behind us that's kind of just plain hook. He's swimming around pretty freely. The other one over here on the jig head is going to be farther down. A little bit. We'll have to kind of watch as we go through some shallow areas, make sure he ain't dragging bottom. But it'll bring him down a little deeper. And of course, he's out here a little further off the side. I'd expect this one on this side to get hit since it's closest to the shoreline. But time will tell. But this here is probably the easiest way to guarantee yourself catching some fish. I know it ain't panned out yet here this morning, but, but throwing you, you live shiners out and just working the shorelines, working along the edges of the docks. Uh, if you can find the edge of weed lines, troll along there with those. This is a pretty good tactic anywhere especially if you're on a body of water that you're not really familiar with just because everything will eat them dang shiners or minnows or whatever you got you know any any small live bait well it sounds it sounds like a dang freight trains coming through or something back there behind us these people out here that live out here, they have got just beautiful, beautiful surroundings. I mean, it's just, it's gorgeous out here. But you can forget about the peace and quiet. <laughs> you ain't gonna have that. Yesterday evening we had boom boxers in the, in the wakeboarders going by. On this small lake, there's wakeboarders out here. I come through to this upper section of the lake and, and Tiger Woods is out here hitting golf balls off his back porch into the water. So they just ain't no, ain't no peace and quiet out here, that's for sure. But it's beautiful nonetheless. We're gonna see a lot of wildlife today. Bunch of species of birds that I ain't never seen. Some of y'all may have seen them before, I ain't. We're gonna probably see some iguanas up in these trees and in people's yards. And hopefully, starting tomorrow, we're gonna see some big old sharks. Maybe not too big. I'd like to keep them, I'd like to keep them under about 10 foot. <laughs> Any bigger than that, we're in trouble. Bigger than that, we may not get a look at them in the, in the kayak. They're going to drag us out a mile or two offshore before we can get them up to the surface. You done scared that bird off up there. You don't be ashamed of yourselves bird didn't do nothing to you. This right here was pretty smart. These people have put their, I, I don't even honestly know what that is. Some kind of pump. It looks like they maybe got a jacuzzi or something over there. Well, they've put it behind a hedge. So it ain't, it's an eyesore to anybody on the water, but not when they're looking out of their back window there. That's pretty smart. They got them a, a tiki hut and everything. Boy, I can't believe we haven't caught a fish right through here. Yesterday evening I was seeing, this area here I was seeing I was seeing all kinds of 
fish popping and stuff through here, chasing bait. Oh, 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 we got one. We got one, by gosh. It's on the ultralight here. He feels pretty good, too. Y'all looking right into the sun. This fish is hit right here. As the sun popped through them clouds, probably blinding you. Put your shades on. I'm going to have to grab mine, too. I hope I remember to put them in the kayak. This is a good fish, whatever he is. This one was on the jig head. We had the jig head, 132nd ounce number six hook with this particular shiner here. He ain't come up yet. It feels like a good fish, whatever. It could be anything. Look at him go, man. He ain't done. I hope it's a clownfish. How awesome would that be? That would make my day if we had us a clownfish. I need to get him. He's come over here to this other side. He said, well, if, if, if the sun is on the other side, he'd just come over here and help us out. That's nice of this fish. He's gonna try to get my other line, apparently. He's swimming circles around us, y'all. <laughs> this ultralight though and two pound line I've got to kind of take my time you don't want to don't want to horse him especially too since I don't know if this particular fish I don't know what he is he may have teeth we need to he's going to get in our other line over there we need to we need to get this one out of the way if we can up there. I really don't want him getting in that dang line. This is a good one, whatever he is. I'm trying to steer him away. I'm trying my best to steer him away out of that other line. Well, y'all, it's taken a while here. 20-something minutes, it looks like, to get our first fish. But this one, we're gonna be starting out with a bang here, whatever he is. I don't think he's a large mouth because he would have done come up the surface by now. So he's probably either gonna be an exotic, maybe some aquarium fish of some kind, maybe a peacock. It is a peacock. That's a, that's a nice peacock right there too. Look at that, man. Nice peacock, buddy. Yes. Okay, let's see if we can get hold of him here. Yes, got him. Got him, y'all. There's that hook right in the side of the face. Nice. Yep, the ones I got yesterday were just little tiny, little tiny babies, but that one there, that's pretty nice. Let me get my front camera mount. We're gonna hold this one up here a second. Let me get, boy, he's wound. You calm it down there, Peacock. I'm gonna make you famous here. This fish said he don't know what famous is. Why the heck would he want to be that? Let me spin around here so I can get a picture of this thing in the sun. Okay. Let me set you up here, man. We on vacation. We out here getting selfies with Peacock Bass. Nice. <laughs> Look at, oh Lord, <laughs> that's awesome. All right, that was worth the wait. A lot of fun on the ultra lot too. Go on, good buddy. Get out of here. Well, he got a taste for the camera. Now he's gonna take his time getting off there. He ain't going down slowly but surely, taking his sweet time. Well, good times. Let's get our camera mount back out of the way. Here's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna put us another overpriced shiner. But we're getting our money's worth out of it. Well, did that fish poop on my thumb? I think he did. Oh, nasty fish. I hope I ain't wearing some more of it somewhere. <laughs> Let's 
get us another shiner here. I can't get a hold of that one. Yeah, it took us dang 30 minutes here to get a fish, but boy, he was a good time when we finally got one. I'll tell you, these shiners, man, these things are huge. The ones back home, you buy shiners back home and they're like minnow size. This one here, he's probably three, four inches long. That was fun on that ultralight, man. Well, let's, uh, yeah, he hit kind of farther out, too. Okay. Well, let's just make sure, let me just make sure we still got one on. I think this one here may be gone, possibly. He's still on there. Yeah, he's swimming. He ain't as lively as he was. We're gonna throw him back out anyway. We may switch him out here in a few minutes. Y'all holler at me if it's been a few minutes and he ain't got to eat. We'll replace him. Alright y'all, first peacock of the day, way bigger, um, yesterday I, I got some on the one inch gulp but they were three, four inches and they were small. I wasn't even sure, I looked at the, the footage last night and I got back and like, oh okay they were peacocks but when I first got them out here yesterday they were so small, I'm like is it a peacock, is it something else? But that one there, no denying that one, that was definitely a peacock, very cool. Yeah, if it works out, I mean, that's the first fish, could have just been coincidence, but if it works out that we need to put a jig head on, get some extra weight, get them things down a little further, then we'll put a jig head on this one too. I'm willing to accommodate these fish, whatever they need. I'm here, I'm coachable, man, I'm adaptable. They just tell me what they want, what they need, I got them covered. The last, the last couple years when I've come down, I have thrown artificials exclusively, whether it be the gulp or the crappie. I've caught some, some good peacock bass on the crappie magnets that I throw for skipjack. I was like, you know, I just wanna, I just wanna get some live bait today and, and just kinda compare. We'll see how the live bait does today compared to previous years when I've just thrown artificials. It was when I first, I can't remember when it was now, 2020 maybe, 2021, maybe it's 2020. I'd spent a day fishing with Rob from uh, Antidote Fishing Charters and we were in a canal on down in Miami. It was further south than here and uh, we were trolling live shiners like I'm doing here and got a clownfish and some others but there was one place in that canal that man both rods I mean they were just going down peacock bass and so that was the best that was the best session of peacock bass that I've had in my previous trips and so I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna try these live shiners out here on Lake Ida and compare that to the artificials. So we just experimenting y'all, we out here, we living it up, we having some fun. If the experiment don't pan out, well, so be it. We're gonna catch some fish regardless. We'll know for the next time I come back, hopefully next year. I'd like to make this a, a yearly thing if I can. It's nice to kind of get away in the fall or winter back home it's still pretty back home because it's been a, a warmer 
fall than usual but you get in the fall and winter months back home everything's dying off everything's brown it's it's real dreary and cold you come down here everything is lush and green and beautiful it's just year round and it's a lot warmer down here this time of year than back home too oh 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 He was getting a little antsy there, wasn't he? He pulled on the on the rod a little bit. I caught some fish in here in this area yesterday. I got some copper nose in here, bluegill. Don't know the depth, water temperature, stuff like that. I'm in my old town kayak, bare bones setup. No motor, no electronics, no nothing. It's the way to live, man. Especially going on vacation, you don't want to carry batteries into hotels. And starting tomorrow when I'm fishing saltwater, you get that saltwater splashing on your motors and your electronics and stuff. Things get corroded. Even you try to wash everything off, it's just things are going to happen. So, and plus, starting tomorrow, I won't need a, I won't need a graph. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna get me some baits. I'm gonna go to them bridge just down there and in the keys, and we'll throw along the the bridge pilings, get something for bait. Doesn't matter to me as long as it's legal. We'll put that bait under a balloon, and then we'll take off and just basically do this right here, just with larger live baits and go after larger fish but won't be needing a won't be needing a graph or a motor down there and it's nice just not having to fool with batteries to charge when you get back this kayak certainly much lighter weight than my other one which is very beneficial when you happen to drag through sand uh, launch and load I don't know if any of y'all out there some of you know what I'm talking about some of you may not but you try dragging something through sand well, let's say a kayak this one here is about a hundred pounds you pull it through sand it feels like it's heavier than a hundred pounds that sand because your your feet are slipping and sliding in the sand as you're pulling everything just feels heavier so the lighter the lighter you can make your rig the better when it comes to fishing the ocean that's my opinion on it anyway I ain't trying to get a hernia getting to the water if you know what I mean if I get a hernia it's going to be from pulling on some 500 plus pound shark Yeah, I'm sitting here thinking these shiners they're so dang big I don't know even them copper nose bluegill I mean they're hand sized bluegill I don't know if they could eat them shiners as big as them things are I think they could probably I mean my, these hooks are a little big number two size hooks they're they're a little big for the bluegill but i think they could probably get those but the shiners being so big i don't know if they could or not that may be that may limit some of our bites we may need to catch some peacocks or some tilapia or, or cichlids or something something with a bigger mouth to be able to eat them things Fella over at that house, he's got to work today. He's, I guess he's about to pressure wash something. Probably calls us a bunch of racket once we get over to him. 
But what is doing? I've been working my tail off at home, getting a bunch of chores done, a lot of yard projects, so definitely nice to get a break from that this week. Come down here, just focus on fishing. There was something splashing right up yonder, edge of that tree. I may walk a little closer to the edge over here. Yeah, Boynton Beach Walmart, I'm gonna tell you, if you ain't, if you're in South Florida, Boynton Beach Walmart probably ain't the one to go. Last year I went to Pompano Beach, that one, uh, that, that one was probably a little bit more sketchy. But, it must be crime ridden. You had to walk through this like turnstile gate to get in there. I don't know if it was a metal detector or what. But you go through it and a lot of the stuff in the stores locked up behind glass. Maybe that's why they ain't got no whopper ploppers. Maybe people were stealing them blind. They just did away with it. I did find a Chick-fil-A last night though. Chick-fil-A turns out is just as good in South Florida as it is back home. Well, staying in, uh, I just pulled up yesterday evening. I got done fishing. I just pulled up Expedia, looked for hotels in the, in the area. I ended up staying at a, I don't know if it was a Holiday Inn or Holiday Inn Express. It was the cheapest of the decent hotels. It was like $95 plus tax, which was still pretty damn steep if you ask me, but it was in a town called uh, Lantana, which is like 10 minutes here from the lake, so a very short drive. But somebody next door to me was having a domestic issue last night. They were arguing and carrying on late into the night. What we got going on here? Have I picked up something? Or is that a fish? I think we might have some fish here. I don't know what's going on with this. It feels kind of heavy. I wonder if our shiner ain't swam through some weeds. He's swimming though. He's swimming over there trying to get my other line. We'll find out in a second. That's two now. Whatever he is on the on the jig head and farther out on this side. Cause see, it don't matter to me. It don't matter to me which rod they hit. It's definitely a fish. When I first picked up. He was just kind of weight on there, like I might have been in the weeds or something. It's another peacock. It's another peacock. Well, he's look at him go. He's wound up. This one ain't as big. Get that out of your system. Go ahead. Get it out. Come in here. Let's make you. Let's get you an extra MySpace friend here, fish. Nice, y'all. Got a spot right there on his tail. All that orange up under his gills. Nice. Thank you, Peacock. Okay. Well, that's two as I'm blowing up in the trees. Both of them on the ultralight with the, the jig head. I'll tell you what we're going to do here. Because I said I aim to please. If that's what they want, that's what they get. We may... I'm going to leave stuff as is for now. But if we catch one more... I got this thing all wrapped around me. Okay, there we go. If we catch one more with the jig head before we catch one with just the hook, and I will put another jig head on the other rod. 
we'll do two setups like that. Which one of you shiners wants to catch a something big here? That looks like a this one here has volunteered as tribute, as they would say in the Hunger Games. Do us proud, Shiner. Let's send him out there. Okay. Let's check this one since we've been set here. Oh hell, this one here. We may be now may be a good time to put on. Oh, it may be a good time to put on a jig head because I'm snagged in this tree. Damn damn it. That dang shiner swam us into a tree over here while I was while I was fooling with that peacock. I don't know why you let him do that. You were supposed to keep an eye on that shiner, y'all. Uh, you all had one job. Don't let him get into a tree while I was fighting the other fish. And what'd you do? You let him go right into that tree. You wasn't paying attention. Definitely wasn't my fault that happened. I had my hands full. We're supposed to be a team at this, me and you. There you come. We're definitely going to switch him out. This shiner here is against us. He's about dead anyway. I don't know how the heck he got over. All right. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and just put a jig head on. I'm going to. I'm just going to do it, y'all. I'm gonna keep us trolling along here while we while we switch this out, but I'm gonna put another 132nd ounce number six size hook. I don't know if it's just the weight keeping it down. Maybe we've just gotten lucky with where we've had that other shiner out, but you'd think they'd be closer to these trees here we'd be getting more action you would think I mean I, I would think anyway but what the hell do I know let's keep on the move here before that other shiner gets us in them trees back there I got that I got that hook threaded perfectly right there first try as the rain picks up I'm glad y'all packed your rain suit. Wished I had of. <laughs> if it stays like this, it won't be bad, but if it picks up, I'm gonna get drenched. This fellow over here, he's out there washing his windows in the rain. He don't give a crap, man. Okay. Okay, here, let's uh Throw us another, another shiner on this one and toss it out. There we go. Okay, we're back in the, back in the game. Two rods here. Oh crap, he just come off the hook. You let him get away. How did y'all let that shiner get away? Man, that dang thing. Let's get us another one then. Let's go out through the bony part there in his mouth. That one right there is gonna have a harder time getting away, I hope. I'm getting wet, y'all. These a uh, rain shower moving through. Let's see if this 
make sure he's still on too. this one's at. Oh crap y'all he's in the dang pedal drive. Boy y'all have really done it this time. Look at this mess. Look at this mess right here. Y'all have done it now. Bad enough y'all let me get wrapped up in a tree a little while ago. Now I've ran over this one. Dang. <laughs> yeah this is the challenge here of going raw and uncut people when stupid stuff like this happens this is the kind of nonsense you see we still got her oh there now he popped off <laughs> raw and uncut unedited people and stupid shenanigans happen y'all gonna see it Man, oh man. Let me put this line here behind us. I can't believe y'all done that. What the dang? I guess when we went back to get the... When we went back to get that other shiner out the tree, I guess we ran over our line with the prop. That's the only thing I can figure that happened. I can't take y'all anywhere, you know. Making a y'all making me look like a complete idiot out here on this video. If this was a edited video, I'd a I'd have edited this crap out for sure. <laughs> All you can do is laugh at it. At least we at least we got everything under control now though. I still I can't get that dang other line off there for nothing. There we go. Let's pedal our way along before that other shiner finds himself in a prop or something. Goodness gracious, I can't see. I gotta get my glasses here. Aren't they? There we go. Let's get this one tied on. And, well, I'm glad we. I'm glad I went to check that thing. I was just gonna check, make sure he was still on there. While we'd got the other one, and he was all wrapped up in that prop. Yeah, let's trim our tag in here. Lord Almighty. Yesterday went pretty smoothly. Today, we've had all kinds of issues right from the start. Okay. Let's get us another, let's get us another shiner here and I think we're gonna be back in the game again. Until y'all do something else. Open up, Shiner. Okay. All right. Let's send him out there. This guy hollering at us. Oh, he's talking to himself. He's got one of them earpieces in. I thought he's talking to me. Let's throw that in out there. He's dying. Some of them shiners in there ain't doing very good. $15.99, them things better live forever. They better come with a recipe for the fountain of youth. $15.99 a dozen. All right, y'all. Well, we back in the game. <laughs> what a mess that was. Snagged in the tree. Snagged in the prop. 
We in business now though. We, we got our lines back out. The rain seems to have stopped for a second. Something's busting over at that dock. You see that? They're chasing bait right over there. That's that dock. We liable to. We like we're going to stumble into them somewhere out here. If y'all stick with me long enough, it's it's probably going to happen. Boy, we're almost an hour into this. Only two fish so far. But y'all stick with me. We'll we'll find them eventually. We just got to cover some water. But you know what? Both of the both of the peacocks that we've caught so far have both been bigger than any of the peacocks I got yesterday. So the live bait has definitely improved our quality of fish. I can't remember how many of them small ones I got on the gulp yesterday. I think it was like two or three peacocks on the on the gulp, but but they were I mean they were just tiny. There's some in here though that weigh several pounds, so we stumble into those, we in for a good time. Especially if they hit the ultralight rod. This one over here will be a we'll land them a little quicker on the on the st uh, stouter rod as the rain now picks back up again. I guess it's just going to be uh, like this all dang morning, I reckon. I didn't think it's supposed to rain. There's another fish over here busting by this dog. We're going to try to we're going to try to turn and come right up by this dock where all that activity is going on. You'd think it's rain and the clouds today would kind of have them kind of have them going today. Hopefully the lens ain't getting covered in this mist. If it does, y'all bust out your squeegee and clean it off there. Or holler at me and I'll do it. Let's see if we can just turn right up in through here where the mother fish was at. Do you see them right there? We don't catch nothing pulling up through here. I'm gonna reel up and toss right in there. I don't have any floats, but I do have some balloons I could tie on and be like a float. If we get on a concentration of them, you know. Wrapped around this one's wrapped around the paddle back here, y'all. I swear every daggone thing that we can get tangled in, it's happening. Okay, let's just give him a toss right over there and see what happens. Them fish was busting. There was something chasing. We got them a free to them meal. Fifteen ninety nine a dozen. That's a fifteen ninety nine dozen. These dang shiners are over a dollar a piece. I'm too cheap to be buying live bait, y'all. I'm just too cheap for it. I would never spend $15.99 for a dozen shiners back home, but if we're vacationing. Spending too much money is what people do on vacation. That's how it goes. Let's 
somebody standing over there. I don't know if they're fishing or what. Maybe they'll tell us where the fish are at. Oh, what they doing over there? I may have to have awkward conversation with some stranger, y'all. You know I don't like talking to people. I'll talk to y'all, but I don't want to talk to strangers. I think I'm going to have to, though. It's it's inevitably ha we're going to cross paths over here. I'm going to have to I'm going to go around him, but I'm probably going to have to say hi just to be polite. This is so awkward. I never really know what to say. Looks like he's having line malfunction too, though. It ain't just me today. Oh, he's got a kid too. I'm gonna have to have two conversations. How awkward is it going to be if my lines get tangled with his? I'm going to have to just make a wide, a wide loop here to go around. We're just going to make a wide loop, go around them. We'll hug the shoreline as we, after we get a little distance between us. I don't want to be tangled up everybody's lines. It wouldn't hurt them to catch some fish. I'll at least have some more on this video. Fish on the videos. It counts whether I catch them or not. Don't matter if it's me reeling them in, you reeling them in, or random strangers, you know. Fish is a fish. Yeah, there's something busting right in front of us. At least I ain't the only one catching much up here. <laughs> Misery loves company. Speed up a little bit. Let's move along here. Cut back over here by these other docks. So far, so good. I haven't had to. I haven't had to make awkward conversation yet. I think we may be able to avoid it somehow. Okay, was able to avoid it. Things are turning around for us, Dale. I just ain't a, I'm not a social butterfly. I'm not. I'll talk to you all. I just can't do, I just can't do people. I 
I'd rather, if I'm going to have a conversation with somebody, I'd rather it be either somebody I know or somebody that I at least find interesting. But just awkward, forced conversation with a random stranger. The, the, hey, how's it going? Having any luck today? You know, crap like that. I just, I just rather not say anything. I don't talk, unless people talk to me, I don't talk to them. Now, sometimes if it's a kid or something, I'll, I'll wave, say hi. But a random adult boat ramp or something, I try not to make, I keep my head down, try not to make eye contact. I just try to avoid it. Well, I thought for sure though, y'all, I mean, seriously, <laughs> I am a little discouraged, ain't gonna lie, I thought with as much activity I was seeing yesterday and as many fish as I caught on the gulp. I thought I'd come out today and, and have the, the live baits kind of troll along the shoreline and we'll just tear them up and uh, nothing. And even even yesterday afternoon, I was I was seeing all them fish kind of busting the surface and stuff as, while I was thinking about trying to get a topwater this morning. Not really, other than that dock over there. I mean, something was actively chasing by that dock, but overall not seeing nearly as much activity this morning it may be like an afternoon bite type thing going on down here right now that's certainly the way it's been back home uh, lately it's been more of an afternoon bite especially for the catfish but we're gonna keep plugging along here i'm gonna y'all got need you squeegee hold on y'all beautiful looks amazing there now we're back in the game y'all can see again keep covering some distance here I, I think we're going to be okay wind wise if we do want to throw the gulp again and kind of be able to work tighter to these docks got something going on up here to the left y'all I'm going to turn the camera around very coyly she's up to something I don't know what she's doing, but she's out here looking for something. She's out here for trouble, I guess. And she's going back in now. She come out and looked around like she's up to something. I smelled her before I saw her. I guess when she opened the door, there was some smell come out of that house. It stunk, to be honest with you. I don't know what's going on up there. over here to the edge of these docks and try to work this bait along the edge of them. We need some fish in a bad way, y'all. Get your Judy off of you. Whatever whatever bad juju y'all got on you right now, it's it's definitely affecting our bite. I want you to look up here on this house. You read that, it says, can I kick it? Yes, you can. I, I, I don't even know what they're talking about. Kick the house? Surely they don't want you to kick that bird. You flip birds, you don't kick them. That sign, it says on the house, can I kick it? Yes, you can. I have no idea. Y'all have any idea what the heck they're talking about? I don't know. I don't know what that means. But it literally says that on that house. Hey, bird, where's them fish at? I'll talk to the birds. I don't want to talk to people, but I'll talk to that bird right there. He ain't going to tell me, though. 
that bird is still more of an interesting conversation than most humans for sure I gotta see if my glasses are here that sun keeps periodically peeking out behind the cloud and more when it does it about blinds you Got water down in my glasses too. Well, for those of you that's tuned in to see an action-packed, raw and uncut video, one fish after the other, ain't been that kind of trip, folks. Not yet, anyway. The morning is young, but it ain't panned out like that yet. But we're going to keep after them. Just like that. Buddy, just like that, we hooked up. The universe felt bad for me right there. We can kind of horse this in a little bit, can't we, with this heavier rod. He's fighting like a dickens, though. Boy, he's a pulling, man. He may have been on the corner of that dock there, potentially. Goodness, I'm going to back off my drag a little bit there. I got my drag locked down for the skipjack. Back home, I forgot to loosen that thing up. Man, this feels like a good one right here. Yeah, it is a good one. That's another one there, comparable, comparable size maybe to that first one, maybe a little bigger maybe. Come here, peacock. Nice, number three. Nice, y'all, look at that. <laughs> yes. Oh, peacock. So let's set this over here a second. Let me grab my, let me grab my camera mount here so I can get me a picture. Well, let's get our line. We got our fishing line everywhere over here. Let me get spun here a minute, y'all. Bear with me a second. I don't want to run over our other line again. That's all we need is to do it twice in one trip. I'd never, y'all ain't gonna let me hear the end of it from doing it the first time. How would I live it down if I'd done it twice? Let me set you up there a second, y'all. Okay. Fish number three. Nice peacock. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Are these things cool looking fish or what? Man. All right. We'll see you, Peacock. He says, he says I'll be lucky to ever see him again. He says he's moving to a different zip code before I come back. Okay. Let's see what's going on with the Yeah, we're still rolling on the camera there. We are right. I thought I'd done something to it there. Oh, well, I just spilled spilled part of our China water. Okay. Number three. We getting there, y'all. Slowly but surely we getting there. Open up, Shiner. Open up. I can't get that dang. There we go. There we go. Okay. Let's throw him back yonder there. I'm going to take a look at our other line over here. Just make sure we ain't run over it again. Uh, you know how yins are. Yins ain't paying attention where that line's at while you fighting fish. I can't get yins the multitask if, if my life depended on it. Let's make sure we okay. Yeah, we okay. We good on that one. Y'all did a good job that time. I give credit where credit is due. Y'all did good. Now let's get over here and the wind blew us off a little bit. Let's get back over here and keep making our way along. All 
I don't know what these fishing guys down here do. I know they're all using live bait, but I don't know if they're like... Some of them obviously troll, but I don't know if, if, if the others, they're just fishing under a float and, and tossing up under docks and stuff. I guess if you did that, you'd need a lot more shiners because you'd be, you'd be killing them a lot more often. Just throwing them out and reeling them in and stuff. I'd hope these fishing guides down here, I'd hope they got them a deal with some bait shop or something. Because I don't know, 15 on a dozen. If you bought, if you was a fishing guide, I'd assume they'd want to have more than what I got with me. So, they'd be, they'd be cutting into their profits a little bit unless they're just tacking on some guides do that. It's a certain rate, and then if you use live bait, they tack on the fee for it. Others, it's just all included. Got to read the fine print. We got another house coming together up here. If y'all want to maybe consider purchasing that for me as like a vacation home when I come down here that'd be that'd be awesome we can just keep the kayak tied up to this dock right here and we'll be ready to go that's what you could do you could you could buy this house keep me a couple weeks a year blocked off of course and then y'all stay in at the rest of the time you got a dang nice place I like the privacy fence situation. Even though the neighbors are close, they've got them blocked out. I saw something back there behind us. I, I think we were about to come up on one, maybe. It might be in our best interest, possibly. Of course, I can't keep I can't manage these two lines <laughs> the rate I've been going without getting in trees and my prop and everything, but in theory we could run these two lines off the back of the kayak and be casting in front. It sounds good in theory now. When <laughs> you got three lines tangled up instead of one or two it ain't going to be as good but we could do that potentially so the wind right now it's supposed to be kicking up here mid-morning but right now it's still we could still be casting a jig have these things going behind us and be working a jig along the along the docks and stuff here I'm thinking about it I'm thinking real hard about it what do y'all want to do? You think we're on vacation? Let's live a little. Let's do that. That's what we're going to do. I'm on. I guess we'll. Yeah, that's what we'll do. I'm going to put this rod right there. There's something right there. I'm going to put. Y'all going to have to watch these rods behind me now. You're going to have to really pay attention to them. Because if you don't, we're going to have fish on and not know it. This one here's just got the plain hook tied on, so we're going to we're going to roll with it on this setup, and we'll put us another gulp on the ultralight rod and, and cast it till the till we get tired of doing that. we was catching more fish trolling I'd be discontent doing two rods here but y'all know how I am I'm a little impatient and y'all definitely impatient I I see how the how people fast forward and stuff like that in the video so I know y'all impatient I'll reel this one in 
And we'll toss the other one out. I mean it though, y'all. You're going to have to let me know when we get one on behind us here. Okay. Got some line there. Put us a gulp on. You're lucky, little shiner. Watch this. Watch this right here, y'all. Watch me throw away a dollar right there. I should have put him back in the bucket. Can you believe that damn thing's over a dollar? Unreal. We about to do. Gulp Minnow versus Live Shiner. If I was a better YouTuber, I'd call this some kind of bait challenge. But I don't have to do all that clickbait crap to get views on my channel. So we ain't going to call it that. But it kind of is. There we go. One inch of gulp. This is a 132nd ounce head number six hook y'all holler if we get a rod on or fish on in the back okay now we're in the business here we're in the game I done threw that thing over my head Looks like I'm throwing up real shallow right there. Kind of working back into a canal here, and we may we'll go back here a little bit before we turn. Yeah, I don't know how smart this is to be trying to operate this many rods, but we'll. We'll give it a shot for a little while. We done got a fish right here with a dang gulp. Yeah, that's a little baby peacock right there. Okay. Well, we've already improved our catch rate with the gulp. About three casts into it. This is a good idea y'all had. We should have been doing this all along. I tried talking you into it first thing. You didn't want to. I can't tell you it's nothing. I could tell you the sky's blue. You'd argue with me. I just got to let you figure stuff out on your own. That's how, you, that's how we got to do it. Got bird over there. I don't think he likes us being here. Look at him spread his wings out. Some of them like baney roosters there, puffing his chest out. I don't know what kind of birds them are. They got a bad attitude though, don't they? I ain't never done nothing to you, bird. He don't care. He said that's his dock. He'll crap all over it if he wants to. Looks like he has, too, multiple times. One thing about it being kind of cloudy out here this morning, it's kept the temperature from being too miserable. So we got that going for us. I can keep the camera running. played around a little bit with that DJI camera, the Action 4, filmed some videos with it. The overall 
sentiment from the audience there. I was asking for feedback with it, and everybody was said positive things about it. But ultimately, I decided to stick with the GoPro, at least as my primary camera anyway, because of the picture quality. When you put the, the GoPro side by side with the Action 4, here's a fish. Let's see what this one is. Oh, this one's pulling. Let's see what he is here. Oh, that's another big bluegill. That's another one of them big old copper nose right here. This one has got something, a malfunction going on with him. He's got some sores on him. Let me have my jig back, Bluegill. Open up there so I can see. Well, he ate it kind of deep. This one here, he's had a bad time, y'all. He's got a sore on his side. And he's got this thing. I can't hardly see it. There we go. There we got it. I think he's going to be okay. You got lucky, Bluegill. This one here, he's, he was close to having it down in the gills, but I think he's going to be okay. Let's throw him on a board. Right up there. This is a big old copper nose Bluegill. Yesterday, I got, I got a few of them. And I, I was so excited to see these things. And he's... I'm more excited to see him than he is me. Yeah, that and they're shy of nine inches. But a dang nice fish, and I'm going to flip him over here and show you. Look at that on his belly there. You got some sore. You need to put some salve on that bluegill. He don't know what a salve is. That fish right there, he needs him. He needs him an ointment. They ain't, and bluegill ain't got much. Ain't got much, uh in their medicine cabinet down there. They ain't got much to choose from. Well, by gosh, y'all. We switch over to the gulp. And see, we got two live shiners out and the gulp has produced two fish to zero since we started using everything together. Y'all should have done this sooner in the trip. Oh yeah, we're an hour, and, hour and a half or so into this thing. I should have maybe just thrown the gulp all morning out here. It, uh, if I'd thrown the gulp all morning, I'd have got out on the water sooner because I wouldn't have had to wait at the bait shop. And I wouldn't have if I had committed to the gulp too, I wouldn't have had to risk my life going to Walmart last night looking for a topwater. I really did want a topwater out here today though. I wanted to try it, but it just wasn't meant to be. Although with no no more activity than we've seen, I, I don't know if we've done any good on topwater or not today. Looks like I can ditch the glasses again for a little while. About to think it's about to rain on us again. You know what else I could have done if I just committed to the gulp today? I could have saved fifty dollars on them damn shiners. <laughs> you can buy a lot of gulp for fifty dollars. Buy about eight to ten jars of it. And here's something else, y'all. Uh, well, I was talking about that. First off, I was talking about that camera. I went back to the GoPro because you put a GoPro side by side with the DJI, and you can just you can see the difference in picture quality. Now, DJI is not bad. It's not bad by any stretch. But GoPro is better. And I I can't verbally I can't explain to you why that is, but when you look at it, you just see it. I can't explain it, but I can see it. 
And to me, even though the DJI is better in almost every other category, its battery life's better, it doesn't overheat, it's just the, the mounts, the, that magnetic mounting system they, they've come up with, genius. It's, I mean, it's, it's a great camera, but the picture quality isn't as good and the app isn't as good as GoPro's. GoPro's app, so like for instance, when I was holding those peacock bass up there on the front camera mount a little while ago, when I go through my footage, when, like when I'm done filming here and I'm pedaling back to the, to the car today, I'll pull up the GoPro app and I'll be able to get still photos off of that footage through the app. DJI, you can't do that. You can edit videos and get clips and stuff on the DJI. Here's a fish, he thumped it. You can do some things on the DJI app, but you can't get the photos. And then when you get photos off of your computer from the, the, from the footage, the DJI footage, they're not as good as the GoPro photos. So, even though we got problems with the GoPros, it's still better, I think, than the DJI. And this fish right here will concur with me. Another really nice copper nose bluegill. You lay right there and be calm. Over nine inches, y'all. Look at that. Man, that's nice. Look at that thing. Hand size, buddy. Man, I love it, y'all. How many, is that three fish now? Three fish gulp, zero on the shiner since we've been doing the combo trip. I should have been doing this all along. Well, for those of you that waited an hour and a half for me to get my act together here, appreciate you sticking around. <laughs> We're going to end up doing better on the gulp today than them $50 shiners as the rain picks up again. It was, I tell you, it wasn't supposed to rain today. But by gosh, it is. Thankfully, it's a mist and not a downpour. What else was I going to say? I was going somewhere, and then I remembered the GoPro versus DJI I was going to talk about. And then I got, I got sidetracked. Oh, I know what it was. It's about these gulps. So, YouTube has a new feature that they're pushing right now. They're wanting us content creators to use. It's called a YouTube shopping app. And historically, I have put links to my gear in the video description. They're still in the video description. So, like, for instance, if you're interested in the rod or the gulp or my catfish gear, whatever. It's linked down in the video description. You click on that link, it takes you to either Amazon or Catfish Sumo's website. You make a purchase. After clicking on that link, then they kick me back some commissions, right? That's how the affiliate programs work. Well, YouTube, I guess, after all these years, got tired of people clicking off the YouTube site to go to competitor sites. So they've come up with their own YouTube shopping app. And these companies, oh, that's a fish. I thought it might have been snagged. That's definitely a fish. We'll see what, we'll see what he is right here. We'll see if he's ever heard of the YouTube shopping app. Bluegill, copper nose. This may be the first time, this fish is out of water right now. This may be the first time in his life he's ever been rained on. What do you think about, look, boy, look at his head. If you can see it there, if they ain't water all over the lens. Look at that, oh, he's gone. You couldn't look at it long. 
He said, you want to look at his head, you're going to pay for it, by gosh. He charges he charges by the minute to look at his head. Let me see if y'all can look at anything. Is there water all over the lens? Boy, there is. Let's clean yous off here. We'll clean you off best we can. I, this, this rain coming in here, we're going to be dealing with it for a little while. Hopefully it'll pass in a second. But... Uh, YouTube shopping feature. So they've come out with their own deal now where I think it's eventually going to get to the point where you can click on a link, make purchases and stuff without leaving the app, which is what they want. They don't want people leaving YouTube to go to competitor sites. It makes sense. So anyway, I've tried being a good little boy and using the YouTube shopping feature to link these gulp minnows. But I don't, I, I'm gonna have, I guess I end up having to make a purchase myself to figure out how the process works. I can't figure out, so th the, the store that has these gulp minnows through the YouTube shopping feature is called Tackle Direct. I can't figure out, based on their site, if they're selling the packs or the jars. Because when I buy a gulp, I, and I encourage you all to do this too, when you buy them, don't buy the packs. Buy the jars, because the jars come with more juice. Now like my pea cups down here, I can fish, or I can put two gulp minnow jars in one of those pea cups and store them. But the, the packs don't come with hardly any juice. They, they dry out and stuff. So. I can't figure out what Tackle Direct is selling. But anyway, I'll, you'll probably see it popped up on the screen. So that little banner there, that's what that is. It, that's a YouTube shopping thing. So if you click on that and make a purchase, I get some kickbacks. But again, I don't know if it's packs or jars that I'm linking there. I've got one option to choose from, and that's what it is. So hopefully over the course of time they'll get more more options on there and more companies to pick from because Amazon Amazon has been historically the cheapest place to get gulp minnows and they're in the jars on Amazon so you can still click on that link down in the video description if you wanted to make a purchase through a link but you should be able to if you got a Walmart or Academy, Rural King, Bass Pro, sport and good store in your area. You can just go, if you want to buy these gulp, you can get them. Should be able to get them locally to your to your house, sir. Boy, this rain is picking up, y'all. Sure wish y'all would pack my rain suit. <laughs> we on vacation. We rolling with it. That's all you can do. We just going to have, we're going to have wet drawers today, it looks like. It's actually, with that wind blowing and sitting here soaking wet, it's actually a little chilly. I got out the car this morning, and it's, like I said, it's real humid down here. I was sweating by the time I pedaled across the lake to get up here where I was starting today. But now it's turned a little chilly here. We, we still ain't got nothing in the last little while on them dang shiners either. Y'all have, uh, you've talked me into wasting a bunch of money on them shiners. Uh, you should have, yesterday when I was out here talking about, I'm going to get me some live bait tomorrow. You should have talked me out of it. If y'all was my friend, you would have saved me from making a $50 mistake. You would have. That's what them shiners have turned into. At least we have caught our biggest peacock both well all the peacocks we've caught on the shiners have been bigger than on the gulp so we at least got that going for us but still that rain is coming down y'all I hope I hope the I hope the lens ain't covered in water right now 
we about to I think we're gonna fish down to this other dock and we're gonna turn and at least then the, the rain will be blowing into my back instead of both our faces here They can pull up radar, see what's going on. At least it's just raining and it ain't storming. It ain't hardly rained back home in forever. This is the most rain I've seen in a couple months. We'll work down to this other dock. We're, we're in a canal right now. We're actually in a snag right now is where we're at. Daggummit. I don't know if we're going to get this back. No, I don't know what I'm in. One of the bad things about having these live baits behind you and why I don't do it more often back home is when you're working in and out of stuff and getting snags and whatnot, you got to keep an eye on your lines behind you to keep them from getting tangled up and crossed up and in your pedal drive and everything else, you know. We ain't getting this one back. It's whatever I'm in, it's solid down there. Well, crap, y'all. Let's do this. We're going to get turned. Keep them shiners coming behind us here. I'm gonna clean the water off the lens of this camera so y'all can see. And we're gonna tie us another, another jig head on. I'm about to nail that dog. Bear with me, y'all. We're about to run our shiners into this dock over here. <laughs> All kinds of technical problems here. Let's see what y'all got going. Y'all cut. Oh boy, y'all covered in water here. Let's clean that off. I'm doing the best I can with it, y'all. I apologize. It's just one of them days. I was not prepared for rain today. We're going to get us some more jig heads. I keep, I keep me a little plastic box here with my jig heads and I keep that in my life jacket that way I can keep them back and forth between the kayaks I had a trip recently I had forgot to take this box out of this kayak and put my other and I lost my last jig my jig head that I was tied on and I went to find that box and it wasn't there I was like you know what now on, I'm just going to keep that little tackle box in my life jacket. That way it don't matter what kayak I'm in, I got it. I got it there with me. Well, the bad thing about this morning is, y'all, we spent some time just trolling shiners that we could have been probably casting and catching some extra fish. But, and, and we're having a hard time filming here in the rain, but the good thing is that the rain is probably keeping a lot of the, the weekend warrior type people, it's probably keeping a lot of them off the water today. So we're not covered up with the wakeboarders and jet skiers and all them idiots. Let's put this back on. Let's see if we can get turned around here. Because we're, we're back here in this canal now. You see all these weeds and stuff right here? We're about to have a hard time. I don't know how shallow that canal is. But it's definitely got a bunch of weeds. So I think we're just going to make the turn and work our way around this other shoreline. That'll allow the rain to blow into my back and we'll hopefully at least be able to keep the camera and the lens dry. I don't know how the microphone's doing. 
but we'll at least maybe be able to keep the the lens where y'all can see without having to use a squeegee across your phone or your TV set. How are we doing on it now? We need to clean it again. We should be good after this. Whew, hard conditions to film in today. We making it work, y'all. Where's my phone at, too? I'm on. We're going to do some. Hold on a second here, y'all. Let's see where we at here. Is that where I'm at? This thing ain't even picking me up. I mean, it says I'm right here. Is that really where I'm at? That is not where I'm not in governmental center parking garage. That gum it. Let's let's try that again. This thing don't know where the heck I'm at. There's a rain shower there. I guess that's probably what's been on top of us. Who knows? We can't get, well, we can't even get working radar equipment out here today. Lord help us, y'all. We're making it work, though, by gosh. We're getting it done in the end. We're catching us some fish. We're having some fun. We're gonna we're gonna knock out this trip here. Get all of our rain and foul weather and equipment problems. We're getting all that out of the way now before we go down to the Keys and catch our sharks. So it's gonna be smooth sailing once we get to the Keys. I just know it is. We're not going to have any malfunctions down there. Now what we do have is a boat coming. I'm going to get straightened up here. That way he don't run over my shiners here behind me as we move along. I actually think them shiners may have... We're going to have to check them a minute. I think they may have gotten tangled up in themselves may be in our best interest if we're going to throw this gulp to go down to one shiner possibly. There's a fish. Let's reel in one right in front of this boat. Oh, largemouth. He spit it. Looked like a bass boat going by. It's nice to reel in a, it would have been nice to land a bass right in front of a bass boat. The gulp is out producing the live shiners though, man. A $5 jar of gulp out producing shiners that cost over a dollar a piece. Highway robbery. I should have definitely been doing this all along. I just thought we'll we'll catch a bunch of fish on the shiners. Won't have to fool with trying to cast and keep everything non-tangled behind me and well, here we are. Here we are an hour later and we're catching our fish on the go. Let's just, let's see what's going on here with our shiners. Let's make sure they ain't tangled up together. Make sure they're still alive and kicking. Yeah, they was tangled up together. Look at this mess. What have you done here? We're just going to go down. We're going to go down to one shiner rod. That's what we're going to do. There he went. 
get out of here, you old shiner. Swimming laps around your friend there. He was having pool time with his friend is what he was doing. Now well, let's, let's reel in this one. I, I'm a lousy fisherman, y'all. If you, if you tuned in today to get expert instruction, you out of luck. Here, we're just going to... That line, that leader is all tangled up there, and I don't give a crap, man. I don't, I don't give a one diddly-doo-doo -doo crap about it. We're going to throw one shiner out behind us as we troll along. Two rods is too many for y'all to be watching and keeping up with anyway. That's too much to ask of y'all. You would probably charge me extra if I made you watch two rods. Let's get us one here that ain't half dead. We're going to stick with the jig head though. That seems to be the, the ticket on the shiners. All right. There we go. That thing up there. All right, now. Throw this thing back out. Y'all toss your shiner back out here. That bird over there, he's, he's never seen a a fisherman like me before. He knows I don't, he knows I ain't from around here. Don't you, bird? You can tell easily I ain't from around these parts. Y'all are still clear on the screen there, good. Knock on wood, it's quit, it's quit raining for a second. We're making the most of it, y'all. This is fishing, man. This is real life fishing right here. Raw and uncut, unedited. You seeing it? Just like it happens in real life, folks. Any of these other YouTubers you watch that they talk like their doo-doo don't stink. You think they're catching fish all the time. Nothing ever goes wrong. They never cast into a tree or get snagged or get their lines around their, their prop. They're lying to you. It happens. It happens more often than they than you think probably it's just you go fishing things go wrong and you go fishing in an unedited video by gosh by gosh you're gonna see it because it ain't getting edited out i would have definitely if i was editing today's video i'd have definitely took out the part where i got snagged in the tree then snagged in my prop <laughs> as a bad series of events I get done today, I'll take my prop off and make sure I ain't got line around. I think I got it out, but I'll make sure it's not. Well, I just reeled that dang lure right up to my rod tip. My prop, I switched out the prop nut that came with the pedal drive. I switched it out for one of the Navarre kayak fishing he makes a, a one you can do with your thumbs you don't need a tool just kind of twist on and they float too so if you're checking it on the water and it you drop it you can get it so I got that on there make it easy to easy to check it this afternoon I keep a I keep an extra one of them floating prop nuts I keep some shear pins and I keep an extra prop in this kayak just in case just in case something crazy happens. I've never broke a prop, but nobody's ever broke a prop until they do it the first time. And so <laughs> if it happens out on the water, you want to be able to make sure that you got a way to get back in. Especially if you're out in the ocean or something. Now I do have a paddle. That I keep with me in this kayak so if I if I have a real emergency with pedal drive where it's just not functioning at all for whatever reason 
I can paddle back. And this kayak paddles really well. My other kayak, my Hobie, it's like a a barge. That time my, I was fishing a bass tournament there last year. And I was pretty good ways away from the launch. And my trolling motor remote tore up. And I couldn't make it back. And I had to... I had to end up paddling that thing and it was like a dang barge trying to get back especially going against the wind in that in that Hobie so this one here is at least paddleable if need be yeah I know it's just a one of them things it's a you you out on the water long enough things are gonna go wrong I had one time, and this was way back, I think this was, I think this was before YouTube. I had my old native ultimate. My first YouTube video, I'm pretty sure, the first clip was in my native ultimate kayak, and I had fished out of that kayak for years. And I had one day, I used to drag that thing everywhere. I never used a cart. In the bottom, the stern keel had gotten so thin on it that one day I eventually just wore a hole through it. And I didn't know I had worn a hole through it. So I just hopped in it, started paddling along. Well, I had a little water at my feet. And I just, you know, as a native ultimate, as a sit inside kayak, and I thought, well, I've just, I, I, just got some water in there. I'm shifting my weight. It's moved up. But as I was paddling along, I'm, I'm getting more and more water in there. And then at this point, I'm out in like the middle of the of the river channel. And I was like, well, heck, I'm going to have to paddle to shore to take a look, see what's going on here. It didn't make any damn sense to me. So I paddle, and, and, and stupid me, instead of turning around and going back the direction I came... I went on farther over to the other side of the river channel. And I get over there, and I'm like, man, I got a, where's all this water coming from? I flip the kayak up and I see the hole. It's just a tiny hole in the stern kill of the kayak. Well, I'm like, well, crap, what am I going to do, you know? And, and I start kind of feeling around on the hole, very dumb thing to do, and I make it bigger. <laughs> so now I have to go paddle back across the channel with a bigger hole in the kayak thankfully i made it back but it's just one of the things you you fish long enough it don't matter if you're in a kayak a boat whatever here's a fish too you make enough casts you're going to catch you some fish you spend enough time on the water things are going to go wrong so it's best to be as prepared as you can for both and we was prepared to catch this bluegill because we was throwing our gulp down through here wasn't we bluegill that's another copper nose oh he just took a swanton head dive right off the top rope i think this one's as big as some of his friends he's as ornery as him though yeah that in there he's he'll touch eight inches not as big not as tall as some of his other friends we've got though I'm happy to get him either way. We're gonna end up catching some fish today, man. It's it's been a it's been a slow start for us. We've had some malfunctions this morning, some difficulties with the rain and the bait shops that don't sell whopper ploppers and the Walmarts that don't sell whopper ploppers. But in the end, y'all, we're gonna get it done. That's what it's saying. It ain't how you start. It's how you finish in life, people. And we're going to finish strong. I can't believe we ain't had another anything on them shiners, though. Oh, we do, too. I just said that. And something, something hit him. I think something's on there, y'all. Hold on. Let's, let's stick this rod here. 
see what's going on here. Something ate our shiner. Something got him. I heard it. I was just saying, I can't believe that. And then it'd be doggone if I didn't hear it. Something ate him. Now let's stick another one on. There went a, we just gave that fish a, a dollar meal. It's like the equivalent of a McDonald's hamburger we just gave him. There we go. There's, there's the next one. We're having a hard time with that bucket lid, ain't we? You know, if we didn't, if we wasn't fishing these shiners, that'd been one less thing I had to pack was that minter bucket right there. I was a late, I remember, I couldn't remember the, to bring a whopper plopper, but I remembered a minnow bucket. Can you imagine, I didn't look to see what them things was priced at, but if shiners are $15.99 a dozen, hell, I bet that styrofoam bucket right there is probably $35. Y'all do a better job tending to that shiner rod now. We can't be giving these fish a dollar bait at a time. I don't know if y'all having a good time, but I am. Even though I got wet out here and ain't got, ain't got as much action on them live baits as I'd hope, I'm having a good time. It's a nice change of scenery. We're getting both the peacock bass and the copper nose bluegill, two really fun, awesome species that we don't have access to. At least I don't have access to back home. So I'm having a good time out here today. We haven't had to, we haven't had to have really any interaction with people. That's been nice. We had a close call with that father and son combo over there, but we avoided it. Some of you have asked on these raw and uncut videos for me to do some catfishing trips, unedited. And I've been considering it. Now, I'm, I'm going to get you feedback for, for the two or three evidence that's still watching to this point in the video. I know we lost most people when I went them long stretches without catching fish. But for any evidence out there that may still be watching, give me some feedback on this idea. So I was thinking about for unedited catfish videos, you've oftentimes, especially the way I fish, suspending baits oftentimes you, you often go long periods of time without getting a bite and then you know you sit there two hours nothing going on and then boom every rod's going down for whatever that feeding window is 15 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes whatever and so if I fish four five six hours on the water most of that time not much is going on, but I can take the action that I get and edit that down to a 30 minute video, give or take, right? So that's what I normally do. If I do unedited videos, I'm gonna have long periods of time with nothing going on. And having long periods of time with nothing going on in one of these type videos is at least we're, we're moving, we're seeing things, we're making casts, things are happening. Things to, things I can talk about. But if I'm just sitting on the water with nothing going on, I fear it's going to get super boring really quick. But what I was thinking about, here's the idea I'll pitch to you. What if on those unedited videos, as I'm snagged over here, I had someone with me? Like, you know, not some random person that I'm going to have a hard time talking to, but like, you know, somebody I know, like a Daniel from Catfish Sumo or, you know, Kayak Mike, Ryan Board, somebody that I fish with and have a rapport with and can conversate with. We would still have downtime potentially, but we'd be conversating and 
giving each other hell and stuff and maybe it'd be a little bit more entertaining good we got our jig free up there that's good without having to reel our shiner i was worried we was going to reel that dang thing in but anyway that would be my idea i would pitch to you would the raw and uncut videos have the same appeal to you as if if i was out with somebody else if i was talking to somebody else in addition to talking to you on the camera that would be that would be my idea i would pitch to you and probably the best way to, to do it would be to test it just do it one time go out there three or four hours fishing with somebody next time i fish with daniel or ryan or mike or something and just see how it goes The challenge with doing that when you're fishing with somebody is if they if they say something or do something that they don't want on camera <laughs> you know, it's like what do you how do you if you're doing an unedited video how do you work around that not that they would but you know you know how it is. You, you say stuff sometimes. Like, for instance, if I took Pro Moderator, if I took him out, me and him, I mean, the stuff we say to each other, we'd, we'd both be canceled and people would be standing at our house ready to arrest us just hearing him, me and, me and him talking a normal conversation. That would, I probably couldn't do that type of video with him. <laughs> we'd be in a lot of trouble. But maybe somebody else that's not as not as vulgar as a pro moderator, maybe it could potentially work, and it would help pass through the time of if you had an hour between bites or longer, we'd at least be talking about hopefully something that may be interesting to people. These ultralight videos. Obviously, we've had some stretches out here today where, where we wasn't getting bit. But for the most part, most of these, most of the time, if you're out here and you're throwing a gulp, you're getting bit pretty consistently. You know, you don't have a, you don't have an hour stretch without a fish being caught. But that's, that's going to happen regularly on a catfish video. So anyway, I just thought I'd throw that out there. Something I've been kicking around as a way to potentially do that type of video. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, in theory, in theory, you could do the unedited version and an edited version. So you would have basically one option for both of the audiences the people who like the edited videos better and the people who like the unedited better in theory you could so i'll probably end up trying it i like to try things sometimes sometimes things don't work out sometimes they do and you never know what's going to work until you try it when i first did the unedited v i think the first one i did was i think an hour maybe and it did pretty good so i thought well let's try two hours and they did really well i thought you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna try a three to four hour deal and i and i i was even talking about it on camera the day that i did it like i, I think there's a good chance that the whole concept could flop I just didn't know if people would set through a three to four hour video of me fishing just unedited. I thought there was a real chance that it could that the concept could flop. You know, it might get five hundred total views or something. Just nobody would be interested. But by gosh, that first one I done, my most popular, my most viewed video in 2023. At least thus far, anyway. It was something we got a few weeks left here of the year. Maybe something crazy happens. I go viral or something. But yeah, the concept that I thought had zero chance 
of being successful. I just tried it. We'll see what happens. And most successful video of the year. So you just never know. Till you try something, if you got an idea, it's best to give it a shot. And if it fails, it fails, but you don't know till you try. Same thing with them stinger flies that I use on my catfish rigs. Now, that fella back home, Dewey, he really sold me on them flies, man. I mean, he was he was really pushing them things. I'd ran into him there a couple times on the water, and I ended up, uh, he had given me some there. The, the, he had told me about them once, and the next time I saw him, he gave me some that he had tied. And I was like, you know, I'm just, I don't, even though, I mean, he's, I mean, Dewey's a very good fisherman. I was like, yeah, yeah, I just don't, I don't think I want to do it, but I, I end up doing it just basically to appease him. I thought, I'll try it. And, man, th those things have been a home run. Now I don't want to go, I got a jig in this tree over here. Well, I about put her eye out with it. But now I don't even want to. I don't even want to go and suspend baits without having a fly on. That's how big a believer I've become in them. And that was one of those ideas that I could have very easily talked myself out of. If it hadn't have been for Dewey, I would have never tried it. So, again, you just, you just never know. So I'll probably end up, next time I fish with somebody, I'll probably, if, as long as they're cool with it, We'll get out there and we'll stick a microphone on them and a microphone on me so y'all can hear both conversations and we'll we'll commence the filming by gosh. And I do appreciate listen, if you watching these videos that are unedited three, four hours long. I know some of you watch them straight through. Other people tell me you'll you'll watch them over the course of a few days. You know, watch a little bit here and there. Regardless of how you watch it, uh, I appreciate you. I thank you so much for watching. Whether it's one straight session or over a week's time, thank you so much. These unedited videos are. Well, honestly, they're better for me because <laughs> I don't have to edit. They take forever to upload. The one drawback of these videos is they take, the file sizes are so big, they take hours and hours to upload to YouTube. The last one I uploaded, it took around six hours to get it to, get it to YouTube, and it's just... It's just one of them things. It's just huge file sizes. There's not much you can you can do about it. I mean, I can. Uh, I'm kind of limited by my internet speed. Not really anything I can do to get around that. But so because of that, I have to film in 1080, versus my edited videos I film in 4K. If I did a 4K file for these unedited videos, my gosh, it would probably take probably close to two days <laughs> to, to tie up my internet trying to upload and then God forbid the power flicker and mess it up they, I tell you, they ain't nothing more frustrating than you're trying to upload a video and your power goes out for a second sometimes that happens in my house like I won't be out for any length of time but it'll just it'll flicker and everything's got to reset and and once you once you break that upload process on YouTube, most of the time it won't pick up where it left off. You got to start all over again. Now, I can't tell you how many times that's happened to me. And boy, if it happens on a video that's going to take six hours to get <laughs> uploaded, it, it, it's that's frustrating. But I do wish I could film in higher quality on these things, but maybe someday if they figure out a way to shrink the files or 
if I get a faster internet service. Here's a fish finally. We had a long snap there without them. Now we got another one. Let's see what this is. I hope it's another copper nose or a peacock. Oh, what is that? I don't know what this is. Ah, I don't know. He's got some weird colors. He ain't done yet. He don't want anybody seen. I don't know what this is. This is one of them exotics. Oh, come here, buddy. I don't want to lose you. What is that? Yeah, this is definitely one of them exotic fish that we don't have back home for sure. I don't know. Honestly, I have no idea what this is. He kind of looks like a bluegill. But it's not a bluegill. I'll hold him down here to look at that. I have no idea what that is. I'll let you all chime in in the comment box. I, it's got to be some exotic. We're going to set him there just a second. I want to get the front camera mount for him. We're going to get a picture with you fish, whether you want to or not. This fish said he don't want to take a picture with me. He says, I don't look nothing like Santa Claus. That's the only person he wants a picture with this time of year. <laughs> Look at that. Is that awesome or what, man? You just never know what you're going to hook into out here. He ate him a gulp, though. He's fat, too, man. Get to get hold of him here. Let's get a release shot on you, fish. There he goes. He didn't splash it's good. I hope this rain's done, man. We've, we've had enough rain today. I'm finally starting to, my drawers, I feel like they're starting to dry out a little bit. Or I'm just getting used to it one. Yeah, these exotic fish like this, obviously they're invasive, but some people say you ought to kill them or take them out or whatever, but I, what are you going to do with them? You know, I'm out here in a dang kayak. I ain't, um, you know, you ain't going to throw them things away at the hotel. You ain't supposed to throw fish away at the trash cans at the park here that you launch in. You know, what the heck you going to do with them, you know? <laughs> I mean, oh, crap. Hold on. Y'all done got snagged on your live bait back here. Hang on a minute. Your live shiner's done. Your shiner's done got hooked in something back here. Let's go get him. But here's the other thing about these invasive species of fish here in these canals and stuff. The... I don't even know what they're called. It's TWRA back home, Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, whatever, whatever Florida's version of that is down here. They have stocked some invasives in the water here. Like peacock bass, for instance, those are stocked fish. Even though they are, they are a non-native species. So I don't understand why one invasive is better than another. Let's check our shiner. We got him back. Yeah, he's still doing okay. Good. I'd hate to throw away another dollar here. I got a feeling we're going to be throwing away a lot of dollars when I leave here to Jay for shiners that ain't got eaten. Okay. Alright, let's get back on the move here. But anyway, any of these invasives that I'm fortunate enough to kill, I gotta pull my britches up here. Bear with me. Gotta stand up a minute. Stretch my legs, stretch my back. But yeah, any invasives I catch, we're catching and releasing, by gosh. I ain't, I ain't throwing these fish in the back of the kayak and throwing them in a dumpster somewhere and I for dang sure ain't gonna just slit them open and throw them out here. I ain't doing that. 
you know, as a tourist type thing, I think it's appealing to have these fish down here, honestly. I mean, let's, let's just, let's just throw this scenario out here. Let's say there were no invasives in here. And the only thing that was in this lake was, was bluegill and bass. Largemouth bass, anyway. And maybe crappie, whatever. You know, native species, let's say. You know how many fewer people would fish here? I mean, I would probably still come down here just for the bluegill. But all these fishing guide services that are out here for the peacock bass... Uh, they don't they wouldn't exist because they, they, there wouldn't be an invasive here You know, I, I think there's a lot of people that come here just for The bass and the the clownfish and and stuff like that. It's just it's a touristy thing these invasive species They bring money into the area people come here fish for them. They're they're spending fifty dollars at a rinky dink strip mall bait shop to get them some shiners. They're getting, they're buying hotel rooms in in Lantana, Florida, to spend the night so they can come out here and fish in the mornings. I mean, it is it's boosting the economy to have these invasive species. So people can talk about how bad they are for the native species in this ecosystem but heck we've caught bluegill bigger than any bluegill i've got at home we've hooked some largemouth bass hooked one that spit it there a little earlier and i caught a couple yesterday evening so the bass are doing okay so i i just i like the fact there's invasives in here so we're gonna let them go now the other invasive species of Florida, you want to make the argument they need to be eradicated? Sure, by all means. Here's fish. All them pythons that are eating everything? Sure, by all means. Do what you got to do with them. I think it's the bluegill here. I think it's another one of the big old copper nose. It is. We have done so much better with the gulp than what we have with the shiners. We should have just been fishing this gulp from start to finish out here today. We'll never buy shiners again, will we, Bluegill? Never. We'll never do it again. I can't get that thing out. Give me that jig back, would you? There we go. This is a big one right here. Let's if he'll allow it, we're going to throw him on the board. Yeah, he'll touch nine inches. Nice, man. That's another fat one, too. I mean, look how thick. Look how thick he is. You know, I've hurt his feelings, apparently. He's embarrassed about his weight there. Now he's he'll, he'll never forgive me. Yeah, the pythons and stuff, by all means. You know, do what you gotta do to get rid of those things. The iguanas, I think the iguanas are really cool. But again, I don't I don't live in a in an area that iguanas could survive, so it's not something I see every day. The pythons and the other snakes, I hate snakes, so I <laughs> you know, I don't want to see any of them. But when you see these iguanas up in the trees and walking through people's yards, I think it's cool. Now, I don't know what kind of damage they cause. They, it, it may be a situation where they're possibly causing damage to people's houses and garages and vehicles and stuff. I don't know. And if that's the case, then, you know, they ought to be dealt with. But these fish, they're not hurting nothing. They're not hurting the the native species like the bass and bluegill they seem to be thriving so they're bringing tourist dollars in i mean y'all know me i hate spending money now, i spent fifty dollars there this morning so 
I done that because of the invasive species. If I was just fishing for bluegill specifically today, I wouldn't have bought them shiners. I'd have thrown the gulp. But I thought them shiners would give us the best shot at some, some bigger peacock bass. And Well, they have caught us a few. Not many, but a few. But I wouldn't have bought them if the peacocks weren't in here. So... And truth be told, it's probably why, you know, they probably know the powers that be. They, they talk a good game like, oh, yeah, invasives are bad. You should remove them, blah, blah, blah. But they're probably happy that people are coming here to fish for them and buying fishing licenses and all that. They're probably happy with it. It's probably like, wink, wink, yeah, we're trying to do something about it, but really they're just they're just collecting that that tax money <laughs> let's just keep working around through here i don't think i'm going to go back very far into this we'll probably run into weeds back here we'll definitely have trouble turning with our shiner the further we get back in here in it but we'll turn here and make our way on over keep working along the shoreline working along these docks Let's see what all we can catch i wish y'all had talked me into throwing this gulp more from the start we'd have, undoubtedly we would have caught a lot more fish the areas that we were trolling along not catching anything we would have probably got a bite here and there. Y'all wouldn't have been as bored out of your minds for the first hour, hour and a half of this video. Next time you'll know. I had, yesterday I got into the town here and I, went to launch my kayak I noticed you know I've got this magnet here I usually keep some jig heads out on I'd had some jig heads on that magnet that I hadn't put up and they had survived the 13 hour drive down here it's that magnet buddy it'll hold them jigs on there of all the kayak accessories I've ever ever added I'm pretty sure the magnet is definitely the best the best accessory the most useful obviously you need things like rod holders if you're going to go catfishing but for just luxury items on the kayak things you don't have to have but things that improve the functioning of your day definitely the best accessory We're going to make our turn right here. I'm not going to go back in this canal. We'll have to reel in our shunner if we do. We'll turn. We'll make some casts right here on this dock. And then we'll work our way on around. more exposed that wind was supposed to pick up today i mean it is blowing a little bit but it's supposed to be some high winds and we're going to be the way it's blowing right now we're going to be more exposed on this side of the lake over here but if it does pick up we could go back to the other side and be in theory be shielded if it keeps blowing this direction so I think we're going to be able to function pretty well out here today. Looks like it's clearing up a little bit too. It's still cloudy, but it's clear off, clearing off in the other direction. So maybe the rain is about done.
Yeah, y'all, I mean, the first, yesterday wasn't even full day. Just two hours on the water. Out here this morning, I mean, so far, man, my trip, South Florida Road Trip Adventure, 2023 edition, it is off to a good start. Big bluegill, some peacocks. Keep the momentum going tomorrow. Hopefully get some sharks. It's going to be a great trip, y'all. Been looking forward to it for so long. It's all coming together. Got a great deal at the place I'm staying at in the Keys. 800 bucks for the whole week. It's a two bedroom, two bath. It's like a basically a condo, if you will, like a little small. It's small. I mean, you've got two bedrooms, two baths, a little living room, dining room, kitchen combo area like room. All you need, though. I mean, hell, I ain't going to spend that much time in there anyway. Yeah, 800 bucks for the whole week. It was somebody's timeshare. They couldn't go, and so they put it up for rent. And so, 800 bucks. If you've never been down to the Florida Keys, I will tell you it is, if you just try to get a hotel down there, it is ridiculously expensive. I mean, ridiculous. Hotels down there will run you two to three hundred a night. You can stay at campgrounds. They're at well over a hundred dollars a night to pitch a tent down there. It's ridiculous. It's just very, very expensive area. So to get a whole week in a nice place for eight hundred bucks, and it's a this resort. It's a it's got a pool. It's got uh, its own dock. There's a boat launch there. I mean, it's got everything I need. Now, I'm going to probably, I'll probably fish there a couple days. If the wind is up, if the wind is too much for me to go down to the, the bridges, but not so, not blowing so hard that I can't fish, I'll probably fish right there around the resort. And last year, it's the same resort I stayed at there with Elias last year. I hooked that hammerhead 100 yards off the the beach right there at the resort. So there's some sharks right there on the and around the resort. And we saw some too uh, swimming around the dock. We saw stingrays. We saw dolphins there. I mean, there's a ton of activity in that area by the resort. So I'll fish there some, but I really want to focus. If the weather's good, I want to focus on them bridges because that's where the bulk of the shark activity is going to be. There's so much life around them bridges. Everything's just hanging out around them bridge columns. The concrete there, it's got all kinds of algae and mussels and all that growing on it and it's just it, it's a fish haven. But I got to have some reasonably calm wind days to get down there. Because what I don't want to do is have a big shark tow me out a long ways and then be out in a dangerous situation with high winds. So, got to be careful from that standpoint. But surely over the course of the week, I'm going to have at least two, three, four days of just perfect weather. Even if it's not all day, there should be windows of time that I can get out there and make it work. We'll have to bust out the shades again. Y'all hang on a second. I gotta find my sunglasses. That sun's popped out. It's blind to me over here. Y'all get your shades on too, because it's gonna hurt your eyes looking into the sun like this. This bird over here, I don't know what he's wanting from me. No, don't eat that minnow, bird. Bird's the word, as Pee Wee Herman said. You get on, bird. I wanted to make a cast here toward this side of the dock. That bird ain't going to let me do it. He thought I was trying to feed him, I reckon. I hope that shiner behind us don't swim along too close to him. He'll get it. Yeah, 
Now this wind is definitely more of a nuisance on this side of the lake. We may end up, we're going to work these docks down through here. We may end up switching back over and throwing the gulp through them areas that we were just initially trolling the live bait only through. We'll be a little bit more protected over there from the wind. That is the one big drawback of fishing ultralight and light lures. Yesterday I was throwing a 164th ounce jig head. Today 132nd, but even still the 132nd, it's just if you're in wind, you're gonna you're gonna have the wind blow a bow in your line. You're gonna have a hard time feeling light bites. wind is going to push your bait to you cast and that wind's hitting it's going to move your bait so ultralight fishing definitely better on minimal to no wind days but so far we've been pretty lucky with the wind from what they were forecasting compared to what we're getting anyway We got unlucky with the rain that wasn't called for, but lucky with the wind. Fishing guides are out. Them fishing guides over there is fishing something deep, I think. They're fishing toward, toward the lake. There's another boat going beside them over there too. I assume they're fishing guides. Hell, they could be just regular people. When I launched today, there was some guides out there to launch waiting on their customers to show up. So. And I'm filming this on a Saturday, so <laughs> I imagine them fishing guides back home, Saturday's about the only day they can book a, book a client. The rest of the week when I see them fishing guides out at the house there, they just, they by themselves. They'll make you think from their Facebook post they're busy all the time, but they're always fishing alone every time I see them. I need to call up my... I got one guide friend. Most of them fishing guides back home hate my guts and I hate them. But I got one friend who's a fishing guide, Mark, from Deuces Wild Fishing Charters. And him and I usually fish together a few times a year and I ain't fished with him. I ain't fished with him in about a year, probably. More than a year, probably. So I need to, I need to reach out to him. He'd be a good one to do a unedited video with, because he's not gonna say something. He'll say something stupid, but he won't, it won't be vulgar stupid and get me canceled. I'm having a hard time all of a sudden in this wind, y'all. It's wanting to turn the kayak here. I've got a fish though. Nope. He spit it. I'm having a hard time. The kayak always wants to spin into the wind. And it's blowing this direction. I think, I think what we're going to end up doing here is, I want to hit these other docks down through here if I can. And then we're going to switch to the other side. It don't look like it's going to, with the forecast the way it was, I doubt the wind is going to lessen. It'll probably get worse through the morning, but I don't think it's going to slack off. So, I would like to hit these docks through here. Yeah, I need to call up Mark and just see. I ain't seen him post much lately. I don't know if he's been running trips as much as not. He's got a in addition to being a fishing guide, he's also got a martial arts school. I know that takes up a lot of his time. So I don't know if he's ran as many trips lately because of that. But either way, I need to reach out to him. I'm bad about keeping in touch with people. Even if it's people I like, people I'm friends with and stuff, I'm, I'm terrible about it. I just don't. I just don't keep up with people like I should. It's because I'm antisocial. 
I was more of a people person, I'd, you know, pro moderator, for instance, he calls people every day. He's a phone caller, too. He don't do a lot of text, and he'll call you. It's very obnoxious. There was something up there. Well, there's something right here splashing in front of us. We'll try to work this bait near the surface, see if we can. We're going to blow right past it, unfortunately. This wind's pushing us. Pushing us too fast. I was hoping we could hook whatever that was splashing right there. Oh, I got him too, by gosh. I got him. Whatever he was, whatever he was chasing bait right there, we just hooked him. We had we had about two shots at him because of the wind. What is it? Oh, that's a peacock. Yeah, a peacock. Oh, oh, don't get in that paddle there, buddy. We'll cut the line. Come here, peacock. Come in here. Nice. Peacock on the gold. Again, the Shiners has got us the better quality peacocks. But the gulp is catching them too. And more fish. Oh, oh. Well, he's ready to go. Hopefully that shiner is going over there. Right there where he was, if he had some friends with him. Just maybe, maybe, just maybe, one of them will eat that shiner. A lot cheaper for him to eat the gulp than the $1 shiners dollar and change that you get one fish out of. I got another fish right here. We're on some right here, man. That's two casts in a row. We caught a fish. That ain't happened all morning. We're streaking, y'all. Oh, that's a bluegill. Man, how awesome is this, y'all? Back-to-back cast, you get a peacock bass and a huge bluegill. <laughs> I mean, is this awesome or what? Not too many places in the world you can do that right there. Go and bumps on him. I really want to. I want to circle back through. I want to circle. I thought something would hit my. I thought something would hit my live bait. We're going to circle back around, y'all. I want to work this weed bed here again, and this other dock. There's clearly some fish here, and this wind is blowing in on it. The wind ain't our friend, but it is blowing right into this area, so maybe that's helping stir some stuff up and get the bait moving in over here. I don't know where my, I don't know where my shiner's at. I hope I'm not about to cast over that line. <laughs> that's all we needs to be. Another tangle today. People ask me all the time about this. Just why don't you throw out a live bait while you throw in the gulp? And I just honestly, I don't like fooling with it more than anything. It's just you, you get snagged, you got to work around stuff. And, well, I just don't like doing it. I'm kind of back home. Like if I know I'm throwing this gulp and I'm going to catch what's there with it. I don't really feel a need to throw something else extra. Now, out here today, got another fish right here. I do have more confidence today in catching a bigger peacock with the live bait than I do the gulp. But this, this peacock right here, he is wound up, man. Come up here, peacock. There's two peacocks right here on this weed bed. Lord, I couldn't get my hook out of there. Nice. Okay, let's, uh, we gotta fight the wind here a second and we're gonna fix our gulp back. It's gonna flip it upside down. Here, boy, that thing's all tore. I'm gonna see if I can get another one on this gulp. I think here in a second though, I'm gonna put a shiner on this jig head and toss it over. I think that's what I'm gonna do. 
we'll see if we can get another fish or two on the gulp here but there's definitely some right here on these weeds we're just gonna have a hard time controlling our position with the wind blowing in on this One little clump of weeds right there. I don't know if it's anchored on bottom or if it's, I guess it's moving. We'll throw over by them PVC pop things too. Let's try this. I need to switch this gulp out anyway. So before we do, let's put our dollar and chain shiner on and throw it over there and just work it like a, let it swim around and work it back to us. And see what happens. Our other one's back there behind us somewhere. I need to take that camera mount down too. It's in my way. Just gonna let him swim around and do his thing right there. He's right over on the edge of them weeds. Let's throw him over here by them PVC pipes. You'd think they'd just be, with him just hitting that water and swimming all erratic, you'd think they'd be all over him. Not so much though. But first you don't succeed, try and try again. Let's spin back around. I gotta be careful this time because our live bait on that rod is still, I hope he's still on the hook. But I don't want to cast over the line for sure. Can't see where that line's at either. need to just make sure he's even on there he may be gone he's snagged and something's what he is oh god bum oh he's in them weeds over there y'all y'all let him swim into the weeds what'd you do that for golly bum Boy, y'all have done it this time. Any fish that's over here, they ain't gonna be spooked off cause y'all. What'd you let him swim into them dang weeds for? Yeah, their brains can't be but just a, they're as big as a little, a little speck of dirt, but boy, they're smart. They know exactly, they know exactly where to go to get themselves in a mess. Look at this. I see him right there. He's still on the hook. Now I'm gonna get my other one over there hung while I'm trying to deal with this one. Goodness gracious. 
Yeah, score this one here for the blooper reel too. Now there goes the shiner. Okay. All right, we got that done. Boy, now I got weeds all in my prop. I can feel them. I'm in bad shape. Let me just throw this thing over here a second time. Toss him over there by that dock a second while we get our weeds up in this prop drive. Boy, look at that mess. The weeds everywhere. Okay. All right, I think that's good enough. Man, let's get that clump too. Boy, that's a lot of weeds. All right. Now let's get a rod here. I probably spooked all them fish when I went over there to get that other shiner, but I'm still, I'm gonna just swing back by here a second and cast this one. And just see what happens. I think I'm going to let the wind push us. We'll cast this thing out and we'll keep him on the edge of those weeds as the wind pushes us back. We'll try that to cast and see. See if we get anything. See if we get lucky right here. Y'all had one, one task. Don't let that dang shiner swim in them weeds. And what did you do? You let him swim in the weeds. I I I don't, I don't know why I can't depend on y'all for nothing. Y'all gotta get it together. We catching some fish today, regardless. So ain't we? We we getting it done in the end. Bluegill, peacocks, some fish. I have no idea what they are. That one was fat. The one looked like a bluegill. He was cool. I don't have a clue what he was, though. Yeah, we're just letting this wind just push us back here a second. Oh, 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 I was in a weed. All right, let's throw over here just dock with him. You'd think him hitting that surface like that would get some attention to them fish over there. But them bluegill, I mean, even them big copper nose, I don't know that they could eat a shiner that big. The hook is small enough they can get the hook, no problem. But the shiner, I'm caught on the edge of the dock now. I don't know about, I don't know if they could eat that shiner or not. This wind is it's very much a nuisance right now. It's just hard enough to make things a little bit difficult to fish over here. Now, once we go to the other side over there, we'll be fine. We'll be shielded. The way it's blowing right now, the direction and angle of it is creating some problems for us. Tell you what I want to do though is I want to go back over here. That whole stretch there that we were working them shiners where I wasn't casting, I want to hit that again. Because that one bank over there by that tree, we, we that's where we got that first peacock at. So that we know there's some fish over there. And I caught fish over there last night. So I want to hit that again where I'm casting and working the live bait. We're, we only got this one other dock over here. Let's go hit it. Let's hit it and then we'll make our 
make our move over here. I'm going to wait to put a... Well, I'm just going to toss this one. We'll toss this shiner right here around this dock a couple times. And then we'll make our move. And then I'll put another shiner on the back rod. One back rod this time. I can't count on you to watch two rods. You won't watch one, let alone two, so... They got them an owl on their dock. Looks like they got trees growing out the end of it too. Nature will find a way, won't it? If a seed lands in a crevice like that, it'll just find a way to grow. What the hell have they got going on in their yard? Is that a cell phone tower? They're trying to talk to aliens from their backyard right there. Look at that, look at that antenna they've put up. I mean, they've, that's a, I mean, that's one hell of a construction right there. I mean, they, they trying to reach a AM, FM station across the country with that thing. Come on, Shiner, conjure us up something. Nothing. All right, then. Here's what I'm going to do right quick, y'all. We're going to put him back in the bucket. Well, I've casted him around right there, and he's, he's about had it. We'll let him go. We need something more lively than that. I'm going to take down this front camera mount again, get it out of the way move it and we're going to make a run over here y'all you come with me while we run if any of are even still watching at this point we'll just go right back over here where we started at today i kind of want to go hit that other dock where i got them last night but we didn't get any this morning but i definitely want to work this area where we got that first peacock bass i want to throw a jig through there if i can I think we're going to be okay with the wind on this other side over here. I hope we are anyway. If this wind, if it gets worse, we're going to have a hard time throwing that gulp. And that gulp's paid off for us. We're getting way more fish on the gulp than we are the shiners right now. The better quality, come on the shiners. But the bulk of the action and all of the bluegill, which I know there's going to be people out there that be like, Justin, why are you so excited? 13 hour drive to go catch some bluegill. But you just, I, I like bluegill. We don't have these copper nose strain bluegill at home. And they just get so much bigger. I mean, we ain't caught one yet. All of these copper nose down here, they're all eight inches and tall. Some of them bigger than that. You know, last night I had over nine inches to catch. If I go, if I'm fishing back home, public water, an eight inch bluegill is a good quality fish. Down here, I mean, that's just, that's just a, that's just average down here, you know, so. Well, we got ski boater coming through right here, full speed. Just, I mean, people fly with these big boats. I don't understand it. This is way too small a lake for these big boats. You'd think they'd have I know this is Florida, so it's a, you know, do whatever the hell you want to state. Nobody cares. But, like, you would think a lake this small would have horsepower restrictions. Like, if you had a, a 10 horsepower restriction or an electric only type deal with this lake, this would be paradise out here. But, like, yesterday, damn wakeboarder going right by you. <laughs> like, you can't even. You can't even get these boats up to full speed in this lake because you you just it's not big enough but yeah y'all super excited to be catching all of these copper nose and uh, hopefully going to get a few more today i wish there was a lake back home close drive or where we had access to these but they're just 
unfortunately we just don't at least not that I know about anyway there's probably some people that have them in ponds and stuff but public water that I can have access to I don't know of any we're gonna run right here we're gonna start at this dock and we're gonna we're gonna do our same combo here one rod with shiner off the back while we throw our gulp And hopefully we're gonna hook into Lord we got some people out up here. I'm gonna have to if y'all hear me talking a little lower, it's because I don't like talking on camera around people. You know how I am. Okay, let's get us a gulp on and then we'll bait up with our shiner. And we're gonna be back in the game. I think that piece of metal I put in my pickup. Is turning the gulp chews a different color. I had added a piece of metal inside the cup so that the cup will stick to that magnet down there. So I lost a pea cup. It bounced out of the kayak a couple weeks ago. So I'm trying to come up with a way to never have that happen again. <laughs> you don't want to show up to the lake expecting to use gulp in a pickup and the pickup not be there kind of ruins the trip okay let's let's get us another shiner on this rig would it help if I give myself some line what Goodness gracious, I gotta get it together here. Okay. Let's see how our shiners are doing. Some of them still doing okay. That nair's dead. I need to throw him out. Seems like when one dies, they all start to die. I'll tell you, a dollar and something piece, they ought to last. These ought to be the longest living shiners of all time. Take him back in there, ask for a refund. Tell him he sold me some defective shiners. Tell him, tell him he needs to be selling some whopper ploppers in there too. By gosh. Okay. Toss that out. Now we ready to fish again. Yeah, the wind over here is so much better. We are definitely shielded from it better here. We're going to have a lot easier time casting. That is the challenge doing this style of fishing is if on a windy day is boat control in a kayak because kayaks are very lightweight and it don't take a strong wind to really get you moving. Yeah, I feel like we rebound, we've rebounded pretty good from the start. From really just limited bites there first thing with the live bait only. I feel like I've recovered pretty well here and got us several fish. Lord, these birds going to crap on my head. No, he's also going to... They're over there trying to get that shiner that I threw out. Let's see if one can get it. Oh, oh, that one did. <laughs> Hopefully now they move along. I don't want to get crap on my head. I don't mind getting rained on. I don't want to be crapped on. You can quit flying over here, bird. I'm done feeding you now. <laughs> Boy, now that bird right there he looks like he got a mohawk he thinks he's gonna get fed now words out buddy they done told all their friends they got a free meal out of me now they all want something last night we got on some of them copper nose over here we didn't get nothing when we started here this morning and 
so far nothing right now ain't gonna stop me from trying though boy what a terrible cast that was I'd have edited that one out if we were editing today y'all are lucky that you ain't here with me actually casting because I promise you as many bad casts as I've made y'all would have made one or two bad casts yourselves by now as long as we've been out here but y'all get to be saved from the embarrassment I don't much happening here at this dock. We'll keep moving along. There's that old, you remember that heron from this morning? We had a wager in Las Vegas. Y'all were supposed to place your bets. Who was going to get a fish first, me or that heron? And I ended up beating him. I was, I mean, I was like Buster Douglas against Mike Tyson. Huge underdog. Scored the knockout. I can't believe that heron's even showing his face around here again after what I've done to him today embarrassing him like that showing him up him being a professional and all i think i've proved out here today i am far from a professional i'm i'm lucky to be called an amateur with all my incidents today getting snagged and lying around my prop and all that bird right there i guarantee you he's never got lying around his prop before He's giving me the stink eye over there is what he's doing. He's trying to intimidate me. It ain't working. I know I own him now. Once the champ gets knocked off, it just loses their, they lose their luster. You know, it was like Mike Tyson when he got, when he got beat by Buster Douglas, he wasn't ever the same. He was just dominant. Everybody feared him. But then once, once Buster Douglas, huge underdog, had zero chance of winning, once he beat him, it, it was just, it was over. Just like it is for that heron, and he knows it. He knows it, buddy, he's gone. He's gonna go to that other yard now. Well, I'm coming over there too, heron, you just keep moving. Buster Douglas. I wonder if Buster Douglas is still alive. I wonder how much he got paid for that fight. You got to figure he probably, Mike Tyson probably, even though he lost, probably got the biggest, biggest part of the payday for that fight just for taking it. Boy, it, if, if Buster Douglas bet on himself though, with the odds like they were, he would have got paid big. Boy, that's a talking bird over there. They're over there laughing to the herons what they're doing. <laughs> and birds talk smack like I do with, with the few friends that I have. It is a huge, huge difference in the wind on this side versus the other. What a difference, I mean, it's night and day difference. I don't know if it's gonna affect our bite at all, but so much easier to control the kayak and be able to cast and stuff over here. There was fish here last night. I remember I'm catching them right here in front of this silly artwork that people have in their yard. How much you think they paid for that that dog? And I think there's a cat over here on this side. I'm pretty sure that's considered art. 
by the sophisticated types. I bet you that thing probably costs a few thousand dollars. I don't even know what it's made out of. It looks silly. That one's definitely a dog, and that one over there is a cat. I mean, what's the, th I mean, uh, what is the thought process? Well, you got a, you got a beautiful piece of property here on Lake Ida. You got beautiful palm trees. They got a, it looks like a pool up there. You got a nice, nice view of the lake. And somebody's like, you know, I think I want to put just a weird dog and cat sculpture right in the middle of our view that's painted all sorts of different colors like what i mean what is the thought process on that i mean look no judgment for me it's your property you do whatever the hell you want but i'm just saying like when i look out my if i lived in that house and, and that bird over here agrees with me if i lived in that house and i'm looking out that window I could think of a million things. What is this? Is this a fish? I'm pulling in something. I don't think it's a fish. What is this? I've caught a daggone coconut. Look right here. <laughs> How about this catch, buddy? Oh, I just put that hook in my finger, too. I lost my coconut. The coconut spit the hook. <laughs> That's the catch of the trip right there. That's the catch of the day. Coconut. Even them birds come over and watch me reel that thing in. I ain't never seen anybody reel in a coconut before. He's strutting his stuff, buddy. I don't know what they're saying, but they got a lot to say. There's so much activity going on here with these birds. There, I mean, everywhere. All different kinds of birds. It's a bird watcher's paradise down here. Them people in this house would probably see more of the birds if they had had them stupid dog and cat sculptures in their yard. They must really like dog and cat artwork. I bet they got a Picasso inside that house. I think he was a famous painter of some kind. I don't know if he ever painted a dog or a cat picture, but if he did, he they probably got it hanging up in there. Well, this section over here just hasn't produced today like it did last night. We'll keep moving along here. Looks like there's some landscapers over here too. I don't want to be talking on camera around them. We may move along and get over here by this tree where we got that peacock first thing. Oh, I got a fish. Oh, I had a fish. We finally hooked one right here in front of this dock and I lost him. The good thing is these landscapers, even if I am talking on camera around them, I don't think they're going to understand. I think they're Habla Espanol. I bet these landscaping business with all these fancy houses and stuff, I bet they stay booked solid. I bet you every one of these landscaping companies are making money hand over fist. I've done got myself hung in something here. Y'all watch this line behind me. Make sure we don't get it tangled in something as we try to work this thing for Eric Gun. We'll back up. I don't want to run over this line. If we run over this this line again, that's gonna be super embarrassing. 
Once is an accident, twice is a pattern. It's like me on a catfishing live stream where I get line on my trolling motor prop. I've done that a couple times. Yeah, I bet this landscape crew, I bet they got this whole neighborhood. Let me get turned around here. Wind is pushing me sideways. We're going to work all the way down this bank, though, with this gulp and running that shiner behind us. Clouds are burning off and the sun's come out now. It's getting hot. I'm completely dried out. I tell you, when I was when it was raining its hardest this morning, and I was soaking wet down to my skivvies, and that wind was blowing, it was a little bit chilly for a second. I got a little cold. But it's hot as hot as damn it now. Have to bust out some sunscreen today. Oh boy, here comes the, here comes the main event, folks. Look right here. Look right there. Oh my gosh, there's two of them. We were doing so well. The the sun come out, and here they come. We didn't see them out here in the rain this morning, did we? Nope, but boy, that, that rain stops and the sun comes out. They're out in full force. We got Lawnmower Man over here now. We got everybody making an appearance on this video. Even a coconut. You believe I reeled in that coconut? I wish I could have landed that thing. That'd have been a, that'd have, I'd have had that thing mounted. I would have at least got a picture with it for sure. <laughs> I would have done it. That, that would have been on the Instagram. I don't know how a coconut manages to spit the hook, but by gosh, it did. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make my way on around this same path that we went on, uh, at least through, at least through the areas where we were only using the shiners and work the gulp. And I think after that, I'm gonna go back to the the other side of the lake and try to use those those shiners over there along them weeds that I was fishing yesterday. I kept throwing the, the gulp and I kept getting caught in the weeds, but if I can work farther on out in the lake with them shiners and maybe run them above, or above them weeds, we might catch something over there. I definitely want to fish this area through here first. That first peacock we got through here, he was on the shiner on the right side of the kite that was further out. Could cast up there a little further out and see what happens. I think if I lived here at this place, I, I, well, I'd definitely climb that tree just just to climb it. But I think I'd get up there at the fishing pole on that tree and try to just try to just reel in a fish. You could use a cane pole up there. Just hang out on that branch and drop your bait over into the water and catch you something probably. You could probably get up there above them and see them looking straight down. 
Oh, there's an iguana right there on that on the bank. That sun's brought them out finally. I guess it's a little cold this morning too with the the rain and all. Here comes lawnmower man, y'all. <laughs> We were due for a lawnmower man or a leaf blower man. I guess they had to wait till it quit raining too. That iguana, he's just sitting there. He's looking at y'all, buddy. He's got his eye on you. He knows what you're up to. That iguana's doing a better job of watching that back rod than y'all are. That there ain't very colorful though. He's just kind of, he almost blends in with the grass. He probably lives in that tree. You climb a tree like that, you liable to see iguanas and snakes up there. You climb up that thing. I just can't believe the difference last night to today in this area. That dock over there didn't produce us any fit, any copper nose like I mean they were all, I got three or four copper nose on that dock last night. And they are completely gone today. And we were seeing fish chasing stuff through here last night, nothing going on so far. Oh well other than that peacock this morning. But otherwise, nothing through here. What a difference. I guess these fit, oh, right there was something. Something swirled right there. I wonder if there's any carp in here. I didn't bring any kind of carp gear with me on this trip, but that would be very interesting. I'm gonna, I, gotta, I need to make a note to myself to remember that to research to see if there's any carp in here. Can you imagine the carp, the size they would be if they were in here? That would be interesting if they're in here for future trips, maybe maybe spend a few hours one day on a future trip just fishing off the bank. You could do that right there from the launch and throw out some carp baits and see what's going on. With this many weeds in this lake, I would bet it's a carp fishing paradise if they're in here. I don't know how that would work with the carp if they would... I assume they would thrive, but the invasives... I, I would think they'd be okay. I mean, hell, the bass and bluegill and everything else has been okay with the invasives, so surely the carp would be too. ain't much happening through here. There's another coconut over there floating along the shore. I wonder if I could snag that one. I don't know anything about coconuts. I assume they're probably like bananas and that there's different varieties. But a lot of these palm trees down here have coconuts all in them. We need a fish, y'all. You think that sun coming out is, well, later in the morning now, obviously. And the sun's peaked out. You wonder if that's helping or hurting our calls. It was a sunny day yesterday afternoon and we were catching fish, but it was, it, of course, it was later in the, in the afternoon. There's a bird up there in that tree right there. He's right on the water's edge. I guarantee you he's stalking something. He's waiting on a 
on a fish to make a wrong move. And he's going to be all over them. Like them seagulls eating our shiner. hope our shiner, speaking of shiner, I hope he's still on our back rod back there. Y'all supposed to be, that's your all's responsibility. You're supposed to be keeping an eye on it. I'm counting on you. Don't let me down. But you know, I mean, when we finish this up today, we're going to, uh, to have started so slow, we're going to have ended with several fish in the end. I mean, not a, it's not going to be obviously a hundred fish day like some of my unedited ultralight videos back home. I and mean, sometimes back home I get on them, you get on a tree that's stacked with bluegill and you can really wear some fish out, just one fish after another. And there's been some trips like that where I've had days of 50 to 100 fish on a three hour video but today's not going to be like that but i i don't know how many we've caught but we've i feel like we've caught several fish there once we started throwing the gulp again i'm going to leave here happy today with the fish i've caught I'm going to be lighter in the wallet after buying them damn shiners that we didn't need, but they did get us the biggest peacock bass so far. So there is that. There's, that's the glass half full way of looking at things. We wouldn't have got those fish otherwise. Now maybe if I'd had me a topwater plug, maybe we would have busted one on the topwater. Because I would have for sure thrown the topwater for the first hour or so out here this morning once I got on the water. I wish I could have got out here sooner. That bait shop uh, didn't open until 6.30 and thankfully it was close so I could you know, get there and get over here in a timely manner but still I'd have liked to have been out here. I'd have liked to have hit the water about 6 o'clock this morning and made my run up here so that as soon as it started getting light, I'd have been casting. But that's all right. We've made the most of it either way. Definitely does seem like the bite is slowed down a little bit here for us, whether it's just the area we're fishing or time of day or whatever definitely not getting as many bites through this area and I've probably spent a little too much time here just for the fact we did well yesterday here as I've got confidence in it that's one thing about when you when you fish a new body of water if you're fishing your home lake or something you've, you've got a lot of experience on you build confidence over time and so you kind of know areas that are going to work and versus areas that ain't going to work and types of places and stuff like that you go somewhere new you kind of have to start fresh and it, it kind of on one hand you have no experience at a place so you're kind of limited but you're also I feel like it can be beneficial because you're, you're, you've got an open mind. You don't have any preconceived notion about what you should be doing or where or when. You can just go out and go fishing and see what happens. And so that's kind of what happened here last night. I just started fishing and we started on the other side of the lake and wasn't doing any good. And we come over here and we got bit. And I said, well, this is where we need to be for today. One thing about this gulp technique, I mean, you catch fish everywhere with it. 
So you can literally take this to any creek, any pond, any lake, any river. And you may not have a lights out day with it, as, as evidenced by me when I went to Del Hollow recently. I just got a handful of fish. But I didn't get skunked. I did catch some fish. You usually catch fish with this everywhere you go. Just having a hard time through this little stretch here. It was over through here though that we got to another peacock because we got to we got it was down that tree down there I think we got our we got our shiner snagged in while we was reeling that other one in we are a little bit more exposed to the wind now that we've rounded this this corner here I'm definitely going to fish the other side of the lake though today a little bit just spend a little time on it see what happens unless I get over there and there's ski boats and wakeboarders everywhere and I'll probably come back over here and make a run down one of these canals them fellas that was over there bank fishing earlier they'd, they'd give up on it I reckon they must not have they must not have been catching them Out on time here. All the way over. Well, Y'all been fit. If you've stuck it out with me this long, you've been with me a long time today. Probably cut this thing off here in a little while. Just to keep it a reasonable I don't, Of course, I, I say I doubt anybody would watch a five, six hour video, but <laughs> somebody might. I don't know. I'll have to try it sometime. It probably ain't going to be day. I think I'll probably, we'll probably film here a little while longer. And I'll probably, when I move over to the other side of the lake, I'll probably just fish off camera, I guess. Maybe get me a little me time, maybe. Today, this is vacation, however. So I might as well get a little off camera time, I guess. Fishing's the same for me, whether the camera's rolling or not. But y'all probably y'all probably be over it after four hours or so. Don't let me forget too. Here's one thing we do have to do today before I leave. I need to get a thumbnail. I need to get some kind of picture for the video from yesterday afternoon, and I need to get one for today. Don't let me forget to do that before I leave. I hope the video from yesterday don't get pulled off YouTube because of the, the music playing from that wakeboarder. He was blaring that music and I, I fear I'm going to get hit. lawnmower man's up there on a zero turn I got me one a couple months ago one of the best purchases I've made let's let's run over here in this little pocket get away from lawnmower but we got weed eater man on down there tell you working the other sidewalk there let's, let's go over here we'll make a little run over here these other docks yeah, I got me a zero turn a couple months back. I got a Skag. 52 inch. Zero turn. That thing will fly. I had a... Prior to that, I had a John Deere. Just a riding mower. And boy, you talk about a difference in speed. And being able to... To turn... The, the turning is what saves you a lot of time on the zero turn. You know, a normal ride mower, you got to kind of swing out to make your curves. 
but the zero turn you can just spin it around and you're good so it's saving me a ton of time I've been I've been using it to mulch up leaves with I bought it in the season to save a little coin on the on the price I saved about a thousand dollars probably more than that truth be told I, I got about a thousand dollars off the the retail price but if mowers are like everything else when the 2024 models come out here they'll probably be more expensive than the 2023 models so I probably saved a a thousand dollars off 2023 plus plus whatever the difference is in the the increase in price when they go up which you know they will nothing nothing goes down in price in 2023 everything's up even even shiners 15.99 dozen highway robbery they're taking advantage of tourists down here That's a pretty cool tree that's in the water right there. I wonder if somebody planted it like that or if that was just natural and just happened. I guess that's a, I assume that's a cypress tree. I'm no arborist. I think that's a cypress tree. They got a bunch of them over in Santee Cooper in South Carolina. That's another place I need to get back over there and fish at some point. Heck of a fishery. Beautiful country over there. Big fish in there too. Caught some good ones over there. It's about, it's right at about six hours from my house. It's a reasonable drive. I think if I lived, if I was within six hours of the ocean, I would probably fish saltwater most of the time. But living as far away as I do, it's it's kind of it's a commitment thing, you know. I can't just go for a weekend. I gotta make arrangements and be gone for a while to justify driving 13 hours each way be longer than that when you, once we get down to the keys about 14 i think it's about a little over 14 hours to get to the keys now it'd be longer coming down because i've kind of cut over to come here and then going down now when i go back home i'll just be going straight up i'll be going i'll be going different roads so It'll save me a little time on the way back, but still, it's still a commitment. When you when you're driving that far, you ain't just going down there for a day or two. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you going down there for a, a, a week at least. But if I was within six hours, I'd be fishing the ocean regularly. Man, we our bite has just died. Y'all, I, I don't know what's up. Can't get the shiners eat. We can't get our gulp eat. I'm gonna blame time of day. Well, I, I need to blame y'all. Is what I need to do. That's what. That's what I need to blame. Y'all ain't reeling them in right now either. Unless you somewhere watching this video while you reeling them in somewhere. That, that's a possibility. I've had people tell me that, that they watch my videos while they're out fishing. So maybe you all are reeling them in. You need to teleport through this screen to make some casts because they ain't, they ain't wanting to bite for me. I'm going to fish around these docks here. This morning we saw them other fish kind of busting over here between these other two docks. I definitely want to hit them again. Now I think after that I'm probably going to 
make a run to the other side of the lake. There was something under that dock over yonder. I'll sneak on back over there to that if I can. I saw something come up twice over there. I don't know how shallow that is, but there was definitely a fish over there. I seen him. See if we can get a cast up under there where he was at. Yeah, that's back there where he was. I don't want to go too much closer to it because again we got that dang shiner off the back. I don't want to end up having to back up and run over my dang line. Nothing, man. Let's try it one more time. Well, it's not, I guess. I nailed that, <laughs> that crossbeam. I can't cast for dilly doo doo. Let's throw over here, maybe. Let's uh, hold on, y'all. Let me look and see where this line's at. Okay, I think we're good for now. I ain't trying to run over that line no more, man. I'm telling you, that's that's embarrassing. Y'all done let me get embarrassed out here. You, you saw me about to embarrass myself there earlier, and you let me do it. I'm telling you, you, you ain't as good friends to me as what you let on. Let me make a fool of myself like that. Come on, Bessie, let's get turned here. There we go. There we go. Crap. Got that jig over that piece of rope right there. There it come. There's a piece of rope. Them jigs are going to find it every time. They love to get snagged in that twine. Yeah, right in here, this morning there, we saw them fish busting in between these docks. I don't know if there's anything here now or not, but that's where we've seen some. <laughs> Old Mastercraft boat. That palm tree right there's got some coconuts in it too. That Novair's got a bunch of them. I don't know how many, know how many coconuts grow on an average palm tree. I mean, them dang things are pretty big. Like if you were standing under that tree and one of them fell out and bonked you on the head. I wonder, uh, this would be interesting to know. Because you know, it ha I guarantee you it happens. Statistically speaking, over the course of a year, like how many people die every year from getting hit in the head from a falling coconut? You know somebody does. Like the, the number's not zero, I promise you it's not. Every year there's a, it, it's a, it's a statistic somewhere people die from getting bonked in the head from falling coconuts. Undoubtedly. Yeah, 
It's been a long while since we've caught a fish now. I'm on to I'm on just assume it's time of day or the fact that that sun come out. The fish we were getting was when it was still kind of still kind of cloudy. Better be watching out for them falling coconuts as this wind picks up through here. <laughs> I bet you too, this them coconuts falling down on people's boats and the roofs of their docks and stuff like that, I bet that could cause some damage too. here we're getting hit with this wind again I'm gonna have a hard time this afternoon I think I'll probably be more exposed to it there on the other end of the lake but I at least want to try it out there's another canal on the other side of the lake pretty close to the launch I'm probably gonna go check it out should be able to hide from the wind there depending on which direction it's running make one more cast right here oh I think so I had a tap maybe I was feeling things a little ghost about right there it felt like something tapped me I'll tell you what I'm gonna do we'll make another cast over there now Whatever tapped me, just talk me into another cast, that same spot. No such luck. Let me set this down a second. I'm going to see what's going on with the shiner here. I'm going to reel him in. He's been swimming all over creation down there. I ain't caught us a nary fish. Luckiest shiner alive to survive this long. He's still on there. Yeah, he ain't, he ain't doing no good. You got to swim around, shiner, to be able to catch us something. He's dead. Need to switch him out. Yeah, y'all, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a run over here to the other side of the lake and just see what's going on over there. The bite, the bite over here seems to have kind of died off. It wasn't one fish after another at any point out here this morning. But we were getting fish, especially once I started throwing the gulp there. I felt like we were getting them pretty consistently, it seemed like. Well, it's been a while now since we got a fish. Did we even get one when I switched back over to this side? Did we even... I don't know that we even caught a fish since I moved back over here to this side. But uh, either way, I'm going to go hit the other side of the lake, see what's going on. If I can fight the wind, I'll try it. If not, I'm going to run back to that other canal. But we've been running. What have we been doing here? Almost four hours on this video here, so y'all probably over it by now. So I think what I'm going to do cut the camera off maybe get me a little off camera time i definitely need to pee and i need to hydrate <laughs> i need to do that in a bad way i sit here and i talk to you all just on and on and on i'm not i don't hydrate and uh, y'all definitely don't want to you don't want me to have this camera rolling while i'm peeing out here in the middle of the lake somewhere one thing about having to go on the water out here is there's nowhere like you ain't getting no privacy like back home you can at least find some areas far enough out in the lake where somebody's going to need a telescope to see what's going on. 
which has happened by the way well, my longtime viewers know this there was a fella I was fishing on on uh, Loudon Fort Loudon back home and I got a message this is back when I still had a, a business page Facebook business page and a fella sent me some pictures through there he had saw me from his house he lived on on the lake and he saw me out there and he had a fancy lens he could put on his camera he took some pictures of me out there on the lake from a long distance away and real nice of him to do that i mean they were good pictures and all but <laughs> ever since then i was like man you gotta watch where you drop your drawers at because somebody's gonna be taking a look from these houses and out here today buddy if they if they want to see the show i'm gonna be i'm gonna be doing some home wrecking because I'm, I'm gonna be breaking some women's hearts when they when they see that but they ain't got nowhere to they ain't nowhere to hide from it out here but anyway i'm definitely not gonna have the camera rolling while i'm doing that but uh yeah i'm gonna make a run over here see what's going on i got a few more hours i can fish before i gotta leave and, and head south toward the airport but looking forward to some Florida Keys fishing, y'all. They some sharks calling my name. Lake Ida has been good to me the last couple days. Got the fish I wanted to catch here. Copper nose bluegill, peacock bass. We got them both. Didn't get as many or as big a peacocks as I wanted to yet, but hopefully I'll be able to get a few more of those this afternoon here. But lots of copper nose between yesterday and today, several copper nose bluegill. Now I love them things. I, I'm telling you, man, if you get a chance to fish for copper nose bluegill, every one of them i mean you saw every one i've caught we haven't caught one of them under eight inches i mean that's a that's an average minimum is eight inches where back home public waters a good bluegill is eight inches and they're not nearly as tall or as thick as these these eight inch copper nose bluegill so i'm having a good time down here first leg of the south florida road trip is going well but the main event is yet to come i hook into a big hammerhead big bull shark boy it's gonna be it's gonna be on like donkey kong y'all so anyway stay tuned well i say i say stay tuned for those videos but in reality you're probably seeing this video last since the other video from yesterday would have come out first i've probably thrown this unedited video on after the shark videos have come out assuming i get some shark videos and i hope i do so anyway wherever you're seeing this video whenever wherever thanks for watching appreciate the heck out of you but i'm gonna cut this camera off and make a run to the other side and see if i can't get into some more peacocks today so anyway y'all thank you for watching appreciate you i'll see you in the next video